Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. The Naked and Famous Denim Day, Saturday morning for me, Friday evening for many of you. Live stream here on YouTube, which you already know because you are watching on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Base out here, Risa in the background. And uh, yeah, I think we've got everything going. The mic is working. We've got people in the chat. The room is populating. Let's uh, let's get this day started. Let's uh, let's start off with a couple of hellos to the audience. We've got a lot of familiar faces out here in the crowd. Media House gang in the house, impatiently waiting for the super guy. Strawberry milk denim. Yeah, the strawberry milk super guy will be ready in May. So uh, we just released. For those people who don't know, we just released the strawberry milk denim today. Uh, you can find that on Tatiana Yoko, Naked Famous Denim NYC, James Dant, uh, Blue Owl. We, we've got a, a complete listing of retailer availability. We did a, a strawberry milk video earlier this week. Um, check that video out. In that video, there's a blog post in the description. It takes you over to NakedFamousDenim.com. Uh, our blog post on the strawberry milk. We've got a little write-up, great photos, and uh, a complete listing of retailer availability there. So if you're looking for a pair, you can find. You, sh you should have no problem finding a pair there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, strawberry milk available now. Um, all right, let's. Uh, we've got uh, BD in the house. Brainster, happy Friday. Uh, Pete McLeod. Hey, Bayes and Risa, do you know the inseam length for the Elephant XS? Uh, it should be up on the website. Uh, we just got, I think, the Super Guy and the denim jacket in the warehouse today. So the uh, the measurements will probably be up by the end of the weekend. Um, so we basically have the, the, the measurements as the products arrive in the warehouse. So uh, just keep refreshing. If Everything should be there by Monday at the very latest. Le <coughs> late, late, least, latest. Um, so watch out for that. Right, sub 5 Hello from Birmingham, UK. Hello, hello. Richard Murphy, hello everyone from Denton, Texas. Welcome. Oh. Um, Decibels, hello from DC, wearing my Okayama Spirit 5s and Summer Sky jacket. Great match. That That's is nice. a great match. Heavy duty and lightweight denim yeah. at the same time. How you do it? Invis Ian's DC's in the house. Matthew Bradwell, greetings from the Rose Quarter. Running errands with my hands, listening to the stream on the AirPods. Well, thank you very much. Uh, be safe out there. I don't know what you're, you're running errands, you're running around watching YouTube on your phone. Don't run into anything. Uh, um, checking in from Ohio, James Jones ordered my strawberry easy guys. Enjoy them. Those, that's a great gene. We had a lot of fun uh, shooting content mm -hmm. for that gene um, last week. You know, we went strawberry picking. Right. But um, the photos ended up, like the, the way the, the farm was set up, it wasn't so conducive for photos. Well, they were very, very protective yeah. of us from getting Coronavirus, virus. yeah. So. so they put face masks on it. Well, they gave us like these face shields. Right, because you can eat it in the, the, in the greenhouse, greenhouse yeah. but you're sharing the greenhouse with other people, so you're supposed yeah. to, like, okay, you can take off your mask to eat it, but you still have to wear yeah. this shield. But it looked like a strawberry, so that yeah. was kind of fun. Yeah, the strawberry. Yeah. yeah, it was a strawberry pattern mask, and then we had like plastic gloves that they gave us. Yeah, and, and then, then shoe covers. Yeah, like booties for our shoes. So yeah. I couldn't take a photo like that. I would have looked ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, but luckily, we ended up somewhere else, and uh, we took some nice photos. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was uh, what was the name of the area? Coedo. Coedo. Yeah, and we were in uh, Kawagoe area of uh, Saitama Prefecture. And they have, apparently, back in the days when, you know, like, Edo was Tokyo, basically, mm -hmm. it, was, it was the center of the, the, the country, and they would, they would let people, like, you know, in the government, um, like, travel every three years or something like uh -huh. that, so that, you know, it wouldn't be so corrupted. So, like, every time you have to leave Tokyo and go out or come yeah. back to Tokyo or whatever, like, they would have, like, you know, like, spots where they would hang out. I or, see. Like, you know, rest uh -huh. or whatever. So that's that's where that was. They would, ba they would banish the government uh, employees for three years or something? 
For three years, get out. <laughs> yeah, well, you go to another region because, you know, local governments are yeah, yeah. important <laughs> as well. Whatever, I don't know. But yeah. anyway, so, so they, a... they had, like, a the like even though it's out of the city, they had, like, a little town where, like, they, they, the, the civilization developed. And yeah. then, and I guess they kept it old school, the yeah. whole, like, area. And it was really nice. Yeah, it the looked Japanese. like walking through a time machine, so. It kind of looked like Kyoto. Like, yeah, you know, that's old true. school. A lot of old school area. buildings. Very yeah. nice. So we got those photos uh, that look great. We got the sneaker photos. A lot of people like that. Um, Garrett did some great photos with yeah. uh, Terry. Terry's our warehouse guy uh, at uh, at Montreal. So a lot of great content there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, you guys really like the sneaker photos. I got I got to post more more photos with sneakers. Um, uh, Trevor, show us you guys' shoe boot rotation. It's a big road. You know. It's a it's a it's a big collection, but I would say small it's a small rotation. rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because I barely leave the house. I really I really do barely leave the home. So uh, of the gajillion sneakers I've got back there, sneakers and boots and stuff like that, like three of them get worn. Yeah. It's not it's not a giant rotation, unfortunately. I wear more shoes for our I rotate it up more for our uh, photo shoots, photo shoots yeah. than I do for actually wearing them. But uh, anyway, we, we could pull a, pull out a few and uh, show you guys in a few minutes. Let's let's go through a few more questions here first. Um, Pedro Cortez, Mister Bezad, I noticed at Blue Owl they have the Elephant XS, but the top button is not like the rest. Why is the top button offset? I was going to order them, but the entire stock top button is off. I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. Should be the same buttons. Yeah, same buttons. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll have to look into that, but I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Decibels. Ordered the strawberry milk today. Looking uh, looking to wear them next week at the DC Cherry Blossom Festival. Should be a perfect setting. Yeah, cherry blossom season is coming up. You know, we. I'm sure it's blooming here already. Mm -hmm. um, the early ones. There's the kinds of sakura, and one kind is has already. blooming. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we, we're going to have to go out and uh, by the river. So there's a river here that has uh, quite a lot of uh, cherry blossom trees. So I've got to see what's going on yeah. there. But it's like right now, it's like the weather doesn't know if it's winter or spring yet. Yeah. Like it just goes back and forth. Yeah, away. yesterday yeah. was quite cold. Speaking of the weather, I mean, this isn't weather related, but uh, Mother Earth related. We had a pretty nasty earthquake the other day, huh? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, big one. I mean, it wasn't so bad in our area, mm -hmm. but... Uh, in in the north, it got uh, it got rocked. I don't yeah. know if you guys saw that on the news. But even in our area, it was kind of scary because you know, it's, it's not like oh, it's an earthquake kind of earthquake. It was like oh shit, it's yeah, an earthquake. The I'm first, to... it's okay. There's a lot you can swear on this live stream. <laughs> like it started off with a small earthquake, and I was like, okay, whatever. It's not that's not a big deal. That that kind of happens every now and mm -hmm. then, and then. A minute later, just the house, you could, everything was, it was loud because everything was rumbling. Mm -hmm. um, n I mean, luckily for us, nothing even fell over, mm -hmm. but like our lights are, you know, we've got lights and stuff that are hanging from the ceiling. They were shaking like crazy and uh, it was it like... It was a long earthquake. Yeah. It was a long time. Like, it was like at least a minute straight. A few minutes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So but anyways, yeah. We're, we're expecting aftershocks, apparently. So maybe we'll There's get always a just, aftershock. And maybe we'll get one on the live stream. Oh yeah. no. I at some point we will have an earthquake during this live stream. Hopefully not the Perhaps. big one. Hopefully not the big one. Perhaps. Yeah. But like have you I don't know. I feel like all the earthquakes that we've experienced since we moved back from Canada it's happening at night. That's true. That's also true. Yeah, very rare for for a day quake. Yeah. Uh, anyways, We'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay. Uh, simple text. Uh, uh, should be good. I, I think maybe you're responding to, something, uh, responding to something in the chat. Should be good. I got to figure out how to tastefully pair more adventurous sneaker colorways with denim. Mm. I think what we want to do... You know, I, I, I posed the question on the Instagram post where, I, where, I'm, where I'm posing with sneakers. Like, do you guys want to see more... Um, you know, kind of sneaker, weft color, like denim kind of matchups. Basically, because I've already had this idea brewing in the back of my mind, I just wanted to see if, you know, what, what the feeling was uh, from that out in the audience. 
and uh, I, I think it was pretty a pretty good reaction. Mm. You know, so I mean, a, a lot of the stuff that was mentioned because I, I said, you know, what kind of pairing do you want to see? Um, some of the responses are exactly what I, I kind of already planned out. So there might be something like that in the future where we'll do like maybe packs. Like, you know, we might have, like, a 300-piece run of, like, this colorway. Three, like, the same base denim. That way I can... If I use the same base, that way I can change up the weft and then, the, like, the minimum for production doesn't, like, screw up, screw us up. So I can get a couple of different colorways going. And then that way, you know, we can pick some, like, really iconic or popular mm -hmm. colors. And then we can get some, like, really great denim and sneaker pairings going. Mm -hmm. I think I think that would be a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trevor, Naked and Famous collaboration with Slam Dunk Anime. I would love that. Yeah. I, I, I religiously read that. I didn't yeah. watch the anime so much, but the... The manga. Uh, the manga, yeah. She, she has every issue. It's all, yeah. it's, it's all mm -hmm. here. Um, if I order some jeans and get them hemmed, do I get the cut off part back? Uh, Seller665 asks, yes you do. We include, uh, that, it'll come right in the back pocket of your jeans. Um, you can keep it for, uh, you know, repairs or things like that, or you can, uh, I don't know, find a fun way to, cra a crafty way to use it. But uh, it's it's there. We always give it back to you. Um, um, okay. Uh, Luis Enrique Carrello. Carrello. Uh, hey, peeps. Hey. Can you enlighten me about the material that's inside edge seam of the front pockets is made of? Please. Thanks, buds. Really enjoying my 11th pair of Naked and Famous. Okay. Inside edge yeah. seam of the front pocket. I'm not. Can you enlighten me about the material that the inside edge seam. The tape? No. Yeah, I'm. Sometimes you're too bad. Yeah. Uh, Louise, I think you might have to uh, elaborate a little bit more on what you mean there. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so. We'll, we'll wait for you to respond to that one. We've got Snowy crying out here. Don't mind him. Um, will the True Guy fit be available only on new releases, or will the Core line get it too? Cats x Pizza. Samurai Pizza Cats. I hope that's what you were referring to there. Because I like cats and I like pizza. And I like Samurai Pizza Cats. Um, the True Guy will first come in Core Fabrics. Uh, so... Expect it in the core and then expect it in uh, some seasonal fabric options. Uh, I'm still waiting on my sample. I've, uh, it's, been, it's, yeah. it's been a while. Oh, I was supposed to have Yeah, that. I was supposed to have it by now, but it's the way uh, the cookie crumbles. Um, okay. Uh, Kentaro. Hey, B and R, are the chest pockets on the work shirt supposed to be d on different levels? They are on mine, and some of the photos and the new ones look like they might be uh, uh, on the... No, they should be the same level. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're having an issue, just let us know, and we'll take care of that for you. Um, yeah, decibel. Sneakers plus denim equals wine and cheese. That's it? It's a good pairing. I oh, I mean. see, I see. Okay, I don't drink, so sometimes I... Yeah. Yeah. I should, I should know that reference. I'm an adult. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeffrey, Gail, any alternating twills in the pipeline? Um, I wouldn't say in the pipeline. So not in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, JYC, if I cup up sleeve for the raw denim jacket being too long, what are the chances of ripping blowing out over time very little um yeah yeah it's not really an issue i i find i mean over time event maybe in 15 or 20 years of, of of consistent wear but you know i've got some pretty old denim jackets and i don't really see a lot of fraying or damaging really like, yeah you, like, where you cuff it, it. yeah uh, -huh. uh i mean it's like the same probably even less than the je jean when you like cuff up the jeans yeah sometimes you get like a little fade pattern and yeah but like on your legs you know that's it's kind of it's rougher wear i feel like around your legs yeah. so you know you have a little bit of a you know abrasion that yeah. might wear away the edge but on your cuff or your sleeve it's it's not something in my experience it's not even something i've ever 
I've ever yeah. had to deal with or even see as a problem. So I don't think you'll have any issues with that. Um, uh, Pedro Cortez, if you can check the Blue Owl website, you can see what I'm talking about. Just curious as to why the top button is offset from the rest. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can oh, check. maybe that it's not lined up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. We'll ha we'll have to see. Um, Jason, it's not supposed to line up. Uh, Jason Fernandez, is the true guy going to be a weird guy, but without the taper? The true guy is gonna be its own fit. Um, just uh, just give us a little time, and once we get the sample, you'll you'll see it. It'll, it'll uh, it's more in line with the straight fit uh, from Unbranded, our Unbranded straight fit. So uh, if you like that fit, it'll it'll be something similar to that. Um, Aya Arai, the arrow fit me so well, I wear the new rainbow cords every day. Well, thank you very nice. much. Nice. That, that is a great straight leg fit for the ladies. I mean, there's more and more um, demand for straight legs fits. So we got, it, we got it for the ladies and the arrow. That came out first. And then we have the true guy. You know. Yeah, that's what this means. Okay, you want to... Yeah, so the, um, the, the top button of the jean, um, sometimes, depending on the size, uh, but it sometimes, like, is not completely, like, aligned as the fly buttons. Um, yeah, you can see but it that's, here. But that's just because how the, yeah... Just because how the the um, you know like it, it's it's kind of like how this also isn't even anyway right and good. and the waist but like the buttonhole it has to just match the buttonhole right like yeah. and the buttonholes are not aligned either so it doesn't really matter like if you take a look at this picture like the waist button um, buttonhole is sticking out from the fly button buttonholes that are lined up also, so. It shouldn't be a big deal. It's yeah. just how it is. Um, and I think you can see it more on like certain, Photos. certain size, yeah. certain fabrics, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, mean, not, they're, they're not always like that, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, if you have a problem wearing them, let, it, let us know, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think you'll have an issue. Um. Uh, I'm trying to pronounce this name. Arth Arva Kale. I've de I probably screwed that up. Just got my first ever denim jacket. The Clown Prince of Crime with the embroidered back. I could not be happier. It's a great choice for a nice. denim jacket. I've got one of those. I haven't, I haven't worn it yet too much. Well, I've probably worn it one or two times. I've got that. I've got the Toxic Avenger jacket. I've got the Dark Knight jacket. I want... I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I have one back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen you wear that. Right, I uh, I like the embroidered jackets a lot. I just have, mm -hmm. you know, the problem is me not leaving the house. That's mm -hmm. the biggest problem because I never get to wear the things that I want to wear. Yeah, and, and also, yeah, denim jacket. There's only so much time that you can wear, and if it's like an embroidered denim jacket, especially, yeah. you're not gonna wear it as a layer piece underneath something else. You know. Yeah, right. Or I want to wear it as jacket, a top piece. Yeah. yeah. A denim jacket to be warm enough to be the the outer yeah. layer. There's only so much time they can do that in the right in this country. But well, um, like yeah, sometimes I'll wear like I'll have an overcoat and then I'll have my denim coat on my denim jacket underneath. Mm -hmm. So I'm like layering it a lot. But yeah, there I, I wanted to get the ghost. I kind of I wanted. I don't know if, even know if we have any of the Ghostbusters jackets left. But I I, I, I kind of want one of those too. I just like the I like anything with back a back on it on a denim jacket. Mm -hmm. Just uh, it's my thing. Um, Riley O'Brien, Bayzad and Risa, can you talk a little about the stack guy fit? I'm a sucker for the skinny look and fit. Is the rise longer on the stack guy than the super guy for comfort? Um, can you talk about the stack guy? I'm a sucker for skinny look and fit. Is the, the rise on the stack guy is longer, mm -hmm. mostly because it's supposed to be a drop crotch fit and the leg is a little bit skinnier. Yeah. So leg is a lot skinnier. Yeah. And that's kind of why, like, we only make stacked guy in somewhat stretchy fabric. We can never make it in heavyweight, like, non-stretch fabric because yeah. the leg is very slow. Pretty narrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's meant to be worn pretty low on the hip. Um, and, yeah, and have that drop crotch kind of look. It's more of a fashion fit. That fit actually came out of... Um, 
Barney's. So back in the day when we were working with Barney's, when Barney's was still a thing, they wanted uh, basically a drop crotch jean, and they, they asked us to develop one for them. So that, that's where it was birthed from, um, and they were one of the biggest supporters of that fit. Uh, and then, uh, and then anyway, we, we still carry it on. It's not our most popular fit. I mean, aside from weird guy, easy guy, super guy, you know, stack guy, groovy guy, strong guy, like they all, they're all doing okay, but mm -hmm. they're, they're not at the same level as, as the, the three main ones. Right. Um, uh, Zool, I'm new to naked and famous jeans. What makes naked and famous unique? Um, I mean, I, I would say a lot of things. Um, the most unique thing you'll find about us is the variety of fabrics um, we offer I mean you'll, you'll, you'll see it we offer everything from lightweight you know super airy comfort fabrics all the way to the heaviest denim in the world and absolutely everything in between we're not uh, we're not handcuffed to ideology uh, the only ideology we are handcuffed to is raw denim we will we will always be raw uh, so even things like you know we wanted to create a denim that kind of looks stonewashed so we did the recycled denim, mm -hmm. right? So even then, the recycled denim was a raw jean, non-washed, but it still had that stone wash kind of look. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll always try to find a way to do things in our own way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that, that's one of many things. Uh, but if you stick around, you'll, 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 you'll see and you'll feel it for yourself, what makes us so special and different. Um, uh, uh, Matthew Solo so Sokolowski. Matthew Sokolowski, Elephant Excess release date next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. If you want to follow, if you want our release dates, be sure to subscribe to our email list every week. When we uh, when we send out the emails, we update that list. Um, so, uh, uh, Strawberry Milk came out today. Mm -hmm. Elephant Excess comes out next week, and then I will uh, I'll have the uh, April release schedule up. On the email blast soon so expect to see that next week uh, next week or the week after but you, you got to be subscribed to the email list to get that info um, alternatively if you go to the product pages on naked famous denim uh, NYC or tatianyoko.com we have if there is a release date scheduled for that product that release date is in the product copy it's right there so you, you'll be able to find it there as well um, okay um, Jacob, uh, uh, Bagtas, Jacob Bagtas, what happened to the skinny guy fit? It still technically exists. Yeah, it's still there. We're, we're still keeping it. It's just that. The super guy and the skinny guy are basically the same fit. Except the leg opening. Yeah. So back in the day, we started with skinny guy and skinny white guy was a pretty popular item for us. But over time... Especially when that, you know, jogger jean kind of uh, jogger pant revolution kind of hit menswear in the, you know, early two, 2010s. Mm -hmm. Men's jeans got skinnier. The leg openings they wanted got smaller. And skinny guy all of a sudden wasn't a skinny guy anymore. I mean, it was skinny through the leg, but people were expecting like this really small leg opening, mm -hmm. which it didn't have. Um, it had a slim leg opening, but not ankle tight. So we thought, okay, how can we alleviate this problem? So we made a fit called Super Skinny Guy. So we had Skinny Guy, Super Skinny Guy. You want Skinny Guy, you got the pencil leg, and uh, Super Skinny Guy was like a needle leg. The only problem then became Super Skinny Guy was outselling mm -hmm. Skinny Guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it had the same top lock, so the knee up was exactly the same. And then people were kind of hesitant like we as, as popular as super skinny guy was the name kind of scared a lot of folks right because people saw that name and they're like super skinny guy oh i'm uh, i don't want to wear a super skinny fit i just want like a skinny fit so the name needed to be changed mm -hmm. so we got rid of the skinny from super skinny guy and just called it super guy and that way it didn't, uh, you know, block people's minds from trying to get into this jean. Because even though, like, we called it Super Skinny Guy, it wasn't like a man legging, right? It's well, a slim fit. the definition of Super yeah. Skinny Fit in men's jeans have changed over yeah. time. So that's why we had to adjust. But back to Skinny Guy, like, the reason that we don't make it in every fit, uh, well, every fabric, is that it's so similar to Super Guy. 
and that we didn't see the need to keep them both as a main fit. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we understand that some people like the the straight leg of the skinny guy, so we're kind of keeping that on the low. Like, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's there. There's a couple of like customers that that really like that fit and support it. So like, it, it's kind of left uh, for those guys. But uh, yeah, I think eventually. Yeah, I will call it. Yeah. It would, It'll transition it out. Yeah. Um, that said, like you will not notice the difference if you put them on. Mo- and be- most of the time, they're too even long. Even though, like, yeah, super guy has a smaller leg opening. It's a tapering. So, like, if you cuff them or if you like, hem them, hem them, it opens up the yeah. leg opening a little bit. So, so it ends up kind of being the same. You know, I, 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 I know that there are some diehard skinny guy fit fans. And they're like, no, 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 I can tell the difference. I'm like, I, I, I don't think you can. I really don't. I mean, yeah. who knows? But, yeah, it is a different fit, but. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah, it, it's, but it's, it's very slight. Yeah. Um, Invis Ian's. Uh, would it be possible to do a raw acid wash looking jean? Or maybe a fabric that fades to look like acid washed? Um, okay. A raw acid washed looking jean. Um, I don't like. I guess you know what? How you would do that? You'd have like some crazy big slub yarn mm-hmm. that was kasuri dyed. Mm. That way, like the thick portions got really dark. Well, light. It'd have to be a lighter dye. I mean, it would like, look. Whenever we do like a very slubby fabric, it kind of gives you that like. The contrast like a, of an acid yeah. wash, but like an but acid it wash, it never really yeah. looks like that. Yeah, it, an acid wash jean is like almost white, and then you've got these splotches of dark. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, I don't know if anybody wants that. Um, you know, acid wash is. Uh, I, I, I was in Discord the other day talking about acid wash, and uh, yeah, I, I, like it sounds. I don't even know if it sounds cool. Like even in the eighties. When acid wash was around, like, you know, every now and then, like, we'll, we'll, I'll find a, an acid wash pair at a thrift store. And I'm like, that's neat because it's, like, old. But it does show the age, yeah. for sure. But, I mean, I kind of, like, it, it is a very iconic, you know, thing that happened. And I like it when denim is part of that kind of, you know, like, iconic look of the... the In the, an era. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of desire. I don't think right now it's it's a lot of, like it. it not a lot of people is looking for that right now. Maybe yeah. in the future, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Like, but I also think that if you really like that, um, then maybe you can DIY it at home. Like maybe just like do a, a bleach spotting. You know, like just. Tap yeah, but like real. Yeah, I mean that that could work, but like know. if you really want a deep, yeah, I mean acid wash is so different from stone wash or like bleaching your jeans. Like no, it's no, I know. so that's extreme the like, contrast. Yeah, so yeah, that's why you have to like kind of, yeah, do it. Yeah, like yeah, you, you know what? You first try it out, see how <laughs> you like it, and uh, let us know. But I don't think it's really. Uh, I don't think that there's a lot of demand. In it, even that, like even like I'm not always working on demand either. Like you know, mm-hmm. sometimes people don't know what they don't mm-hmm. you know don't know what they want mm-hmm. because it doesn't exist. But in my mind, like that spl- really light and dark splotchy. That that it would be kind of goes against the the idea of rot in them. Also, I think that's part of that. It, it could be fun to like figure it out. Yeah, but. Yeah, the the splotchiness of it is a little. Uh, yeah, acid wash. I just I just remember like poor fitting, like not great looking jeans. Like I, I can appreciate them for what they were, but I have no nostalgia for acid wash. Mm-hmm. Like they are they are, they're they're some really ugly jeans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you you know I used I used to remember on the forums, um, they used to have these like ugliest jeans in the world contests. Like, people would find just the worst jeans, and they would post them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, some were, some were pretty bad. And, like, I, 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 could, I could, 
And you'd oftentimes they're like they'd be from like you know high end designer brands and like you know sometimes like these designer brands, they're I think they're trolling their audience a little bit. Like I think there's a designer there who's like let's have a contest to see who can make the worst piece of clothing for the most price, and see who who who, who can sell the most of it. Like there's got to be some kind of trolling in that in that realm. Because sometimes they make just the worst things I've ever seen. I think sometimes they make things that other people are not making just for the sake of it, like just to. Yeah, go on like some designer websites and 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 check out their denim selections. Sometimes it's just it's not good. To be fair, to be fair, look, look, we have, to be perfectly fair. Sometimes we've made some weird jeans ourselves, and they're not for everybody. I get it, and I get that what they make are also not for everybody. You got you got to be with it. If you're not with it, you're not with it. Fine. Um, it's also very subjective. Very subjective. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know where how I start acid wash. Yeah, I have no, I have no desire. I just, I'm not an acid wash guy. I grew up in the '80s. To me, acid wash is like you know ill-fitting. When we think about like really ill-fitting dad jeans, like really big in the thigh with like a taper that was still. You know, not big in the yeah. like a lower thigh. Yeah, 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 really big in the lower thigh, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But but also like you didn't really grow up. You're a kid of the '90s, you know. Like it's yeah. it's not your age, so I don't know how like. But you know people what? People who are ten years older than Be- us feel. Being a kid in the '90s, being a kid in the '90s, we knew that the '80s fashion sucked. Right, and I, there's certain nostalgia I have for it, but even in the 90s, we were making fun of the 80s, which yeah, I thought was 90s pretty funny. 90s would make fun of 80s. Like, yeah. it's always that. Like, the closest to decade that you make fun of it, because it's, mm. it's not, like, Yeah, but cool. we're not making fun of the 2000s, the 2010s. I just, I just don't feel like we're making fun of it, like, as a, as a thing, right? Mm. Like, the 90s really harped on the 80s, Right. More so than any other, like, you know, not the 70s, you know, I don't know, not really. I kind of liked it when I was growing up, but anyway, what do you guys think? Let us know. Mm-hmm. Which decade had the worst fashion for jeans? Which was the worst? I'm going to say the 80s. Yeah. The 80s was the worst time yeah. for denim. For other things, there was, like... For music, very, fantastic. Like, film, fantastic. Very iconic. Yeah looks yeah and like i don't i also like the you know like the hair and all Mm -hmm. that like even though it's like really not something that we do anymore yeah but But, uh yeah the jeans i think they're way too experimental in the 80s yeah um uh kurt cobain jeans are cool cool hrz yeah he 90s grunge 90s that's not 80s Grunge 90s. Um, Ray Tattooed Boy. No, the Jinko era was the worst. Jinko era, late 90s. Not the greatest look. Mm-hmm. Fun to look back on. Mm-hmm. Not the greatest look. I was there. I wore, I had, I hung out with ravers. Mm-hmm. So I had these raver pants that were like basically skirts for legs. Yeah. But I also do think that it wasn't, you know, like it's just a certain community liked that. Fashion. And and that existed in the mall, which means that it's yeah. you know it's kind of mass. But I understand that. But it wasn't. Yeah, I bought my raver pants at the mall. Like mm-hmm. I didn't go to. There, you know what? There were certain raver stores that I would go to, but I couldn't afford it. It was really expensive, and um, and then uh, at the mall, sometimes you know I'd be able to uh, I would find stuff for like stuff that I could afford, but. Uh, Oh, Ray Tattooed Boy. Ha, I can see you with glow sticks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 the kids I hung out with, it was, it was pretty funny. Mm. We were, we, we were, uh, we were the mall ravers. That's for sure. Um, and I, and I, and I played a lot of Dance Dance Revolution. A lot. So it was, <laughs> I looked, I looked like a pretty funny kid. Um, Gary Rainey Jr. It's my 34th birthday today. Happy to be hanging out with Hanging out in the live stream, everybody say happy birthday happy to birthday, Gary Brady Jr. Happy birthday. I hope you have a great one. 34 years. That's a good number. I remember 34. It's, good, t- it's good time. Mm. It's a good time. Uh, Bright 75, 80s, terrible. Snow washed, all that kind of rubbish. Yeah, the acid wash jeans, snow washed jeans, they looked so artificial. That was the problem. 
of of the eighties jeans. The the like not and to say the that makeup and then yeah the, yeah even was, the colors yeah the colors were all <laughs> over the colors, place. Colors I like I love sure like it's so yeah. cool yeah but yeah the artificialness of the eighties I think that's that's really what throws me off uh, with uh, with some of the the t shirts cool like you know there's a lot that I can that can be translatable and worn down the line but uh, the eighties denim man that was a uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think we're gonna. Have, especially the fits. Like you said it before, it was those tapered legs with the big knees. Mm -hmm. No good. It wasn't tapered right. It wasn't tapered right. Yeah, they didn't seem to figure out fit until you know. I have to say that they didn't figure out even like you know low priced jeans or whatever. They they never figured out fit until like the two thousands. Because the skinny I, jeans. Well, but that was kind of because like, of the fabric. May the fabric. maybe, but I I like. Yeah, even for the ladies, like, you know, you'd see these designer jeans with 100% cotton and you had to be a twig. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was great if you were in, like, a you know, TV ad and you were a famous, you know, you know person. But even still, it wasn't, like, comfortable. Yeah, it couldn't like, have been comfortable. Yeah. yeah. The, we just talked yeah. about it. it. It's, like, my first, like, real, like, expensive pair of jeans was diesel and it was, like, 100% cotton. 100% yeah. cotton, very skinny. Very low rise yep. too. It was just like just uncomfortable yeah. all around. I remember selling. I was working for Diesel at at the well, maybe around the time you bought those jeans. But I was working in. Uh, 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 I ran a the shop and shop at Holt Renfrew for Diesel, mm -hmm. and I ran it in the women's department. So I was working in ladies denim at the mm -hmm. time, and this was in the era of. Seven Jeans, Citizen Jeans, Antique, True Religion, like every Hollywood brand with like the most bedazzled pockets and things like that. Those were on the up. But Diesel had been around as like the designer brand for so long, like Diesel, Miss 60, like these Italian brands. And it was very difficult because we had this core audience of like Diesel customers who really loved wearing like this authentic 100% cotton like kind of thick denim and not to say the stretch isn't authentic anyways but you know what I mean like diesel was so set in like we're only making 100% cotton when everybody else is making these stretch jeans and those jeans were clearly selling better mm -hmm. because the ladies are coming in to buy designer jeans and they're like whoa these ones fit mm -hmm. like these fit and they fit good mm -hmm. they fit good because they stretch mm -hmm. right and I was here like hey I'm like my job is to sell diesel and I'm trying to sell diesel to these people, and they're like, uh-uh. Like, I, number one, the rises was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like, six-inch rises. Like, mm -hmm. the shortest rises you've ever seen. Like, it would make Britney Spears blush. Like, they were so short. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I think I bought mine a little earlier than that. That that was oh, not the... the okay, phase, not, not the, but, that yeah. era. Oh, uh, Invis Ian's Rock and Republic all day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I sold a lot of Rock and Republic jeans back in the day. But, um... Yeah, they were they were really hell bent on 100% cotton for a long time. They really didn't like. I think it was because of like the distressing was their thing, yeah. and it's the, like it, the, it, the technology wasn't there yet. Like yeah. it was hard to do non like it was very stretchy fabric. With those kind of washes that yeah. they were doing, yeah, that that that's probably it. Um, uh, okay, Riley O'Brien, does the milk selvage have any stretch? No, it's milk and cotton. So there's no stretch fibers in there, but the, de the denim itself has a natural stretch. Um, not not like an elastin though, but no. uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's, like it's not like a snap stretch. batch, yeah. snap back stretch, it's more like a cotton stretch. Um, okay, uh, James Jones, I remember wearing guest jeans in the late 80s, early 90s. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I remember, uh, I mean, they definitely had a lot of acid wash uh, in, in that realm as well. Um, yeah, acid wash. It's, uh, it's fun to, like, it's just fun to reminisce about these old styles. Um, Pedro Cortez, Fubu jeans and Carl Kanai. Uh, Fubu jeans and a Carl Kanai shirt, I thought I was so fresh. Haha. <laughs> Yo, Fubu jeans, Carl Kanai, that, like, that was, like, half my high school. Like it was a, to be, I mean, to be fair, we all wore baggy jeans, mm -hmm. right? Like, and that's why I think the raver jeans, like the Jinkos didn't like, it didn't not make sense right. because we were yeah. like all the jeans we wore, like I was probably a 28 waist and I wore 34 inch, like 34 waist jeans probably in high school. Mm -hmm. I just put on a belt and 
had right. super baggy jeans, and they're like, oh, well, here's even baggier jeans. And I'm like, cool. Like, <laughs> like we all, yeah. all of our pants were huge. Um, yeah, and like, that ain't coming back. You know, there's certain things that is just like... I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, there's one thing to wear, like, a wider leg, like a heritage fit, but, you know, the way we were wearing baggy jeans with, like, giant, like, basketball shoes and, you know... We wore, uh, yeah, we were we were wearing our pants way too yeah. big. I mean, uh, I think we already saw that baggy, like, uh, you know, silhouette coming back, and it didn't go all the way there. Like, I think it went as wide as it could. Yeah. Like, not so much in North America, but here, Korea, like, everybody wears, like, a very baggy clothes, not just pants, yeah, but, yeah. like, tops, too. Like... That's that's very trendy right now, but I think it's gotten to where like okay, well I think baggy is kind of like what everybody's doing now. I think it's co- going back to like the slower yeah. end. Yeah, but it's also more of a uh, a fashion thing, right? It's like you know Yoji Yamamoto flowy kind of big fits. Like that's always kind of big, been big in the fashion world, right? Like. Mm, yeah, but it's it's like everybody, like you know, everybody brands are are doing that now. Like if you go out anywhere, like in in like in Japan yeah. now, like young people, everybody's wearing big clothes. Yeah, everybody. Like you don't see like a lot of tight fit things at all right, right. now. Right. Yeah, but I think it's it's trends come down from that, right? Like that's that's like the uh, you know it came from like the high fashion, loose and flowy. Like, because it's not baggy in the sense, like, nobody's wearing tall tees and, like, baggy jeans. They're wearing, like... I think they are. He- no, here not, they are. Not tall tees. Well, I don't think you know. N- no, n- not to the extent. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. This is how, uh, like, how, how far it went back then. It's not going all the way to that. It's yeah. just, I think it's already coming back towards the other way. Mm. Uh, oh, right. Um... Uh, Ray Tattooed Boy, dude, the gout, gabage, gabage, the gabage, I don't know that, I don't know what that is, uh, and Pepe jeans <laughs> with a yoga t-shirt at the 8th grade dance, woo, yeah, 8th grade dance, what was I wearing at the 8th grade dance, probably uh, a sweater vest, <laughs> <laughs> and like chinos probably, I thought I was maybe, <laughs> <laughs> You're a Chandler Bing. Yeah, I was a Chandler Bing, maybe a little bit. I was, a, I was, uh, it wasn't until like late high school until I figured out, like, oh, I could dress myself. And, uh, yeah, like, I, I mean, at the dance, obviously, I'm not from there. I yeah. don't have dances in school, but like, I thought the point is to dress up, like, to, to, like, a, like, a more formal, yeah, well, not there, formal. Like, we would have formals, um, yeah, we would have formals where you were supposed oh, to dress up, and then so there was the just, dances are different. Yeah, it's just a dance. Like it's like oh. going to the club for the kids. So oh, I yeah, see. Okay. but I was a kid. I didn't have any like, I didn't have any cool clothes. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you know, that, not, <laughs> not, it's not that. It's like it was just a different time. Like you know, yeah. we just you know you know my mom bought my clothes and like she bought what she thought was fine for me but she wasn't buying me like extreme you know mm-hmm. crazy stuff i wasn't uh you know like yeah. that kind of kid but you wore a sweater vest because it's an occasion where you're supposed to wear something else maybe than, than... maybe i thought i would just look good i don't know <laughs> um yeah like uh the other thing in, in in junior high like that was really popular were uh just like a nike or adidas t-shirts it mm. was very sporty mm. yeah very sporty um, yeah, jeans and like a Nike swoosh T-shirt. That was probably mm-hmm. and like a Nike cap. That was or in high by 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 high school it was like a Nike visor. I mm-hmm. wore uh, with my raver pants. People still wear that. Pe- now. Do people wear visors anymore? I don't know. That was like some visor looks coming out like maybe a couple of years ago or something. Yeah, I don't know. that might have been too trendy, but like yeah, maybe. The, I mean, the kids and and the uh, what's it called. Um, Fanny packs? Yeah. They're still packs. wearing are they still wearing those? I don't know. You know, there's that one scene in Clueless. I'm sure we've all seen the movie Clueless, where uh Cher is explaining like how the guys are dressing in high school and they just do like this like shot of like these guys in baggy jeans and greasy hair and long t shirts and I'm like, yeah, that was very accurate. 
That was that was what we all thought looked cool. Um, uh, Cedrus Triple Five has Naked and Famous ever launched a pair of denim with buttons for suspenders? One time we did it for a customer. Yeah, we did it once for a customer. I think we've also done it with Paul Rose products. Right, right. Um, yeah, not something I don't think we'll. I don't think we'll ever do that again. It's not like vin like heritage stuff like that is not really our forte. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be difficult to do. I just don't know if there's a lot of folks who want it. To be fair, if you want to put suspenders buttons on, you could just sew them on yourself, and then you've got yourself some suspender buttons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, early 90s dances were the thing to do. Oh, man. Uh, do not need to remember those for too long. BD, yeah. 90s school dances. I mean, you know, in junior high, it was this dance, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't know yeah. this one. No, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. Uh, if you were even brave enough to, to, to ask, ask a, girl a girl to dance, yeah. I, I certainly was not. I was, uh, they play the slow song, and, you know, all the, all the nerds were just... Uh, in the back. In the back, sipping <laughs> their Coca-Cola. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, it's kind of uh, cute that uh, they kind of, like, encourage, like, um, I don't know, like, opposite sex, like, activities in, you know, junior high school. It's kind of cute. I mean, we sh Like, because, cause, like... You went to all-girls school. Right. Yeah. And we were banned from even talking to boys, really. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, it's funny you say that. I mean, you know, we had all of our interactions were with each other. So it wasn't... No, no, no. Uh, yeah, but like dance, like one-on-one, -on -one, you know, kind of slow dance. That's kind of a romantic connotation. Oh, I guess rather so. Rather than like, you know... Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I feel like the kids who were, you know being romantic at the dance we're probably also being romantic outside of the dance too so i don't mm -hmm. think it, it uh, yeah but it's like the 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 school is providing opportunity to maybe ask out somebody or uh, like, maybe you know i guess I mean? so i think that's cute yeah i think they just wanted to like you know it's like pizza day for the kids like the kid the kids need a dance give them a dance kids mm -hmm. want pizza day give them pizza day like you know i just don't know if uh I guess it's just a traditional, you know, like, every, yeah. every, and, it, and, and it, it's something that the kids look forward to. Like, we're going to have a school dance. Like, it's a party. You yeah. Know? yeah. And it's also kind of like a step towards adulthood a little mm. bit. I, I feel like in Japan, people would be like, parents would be like, why are you encouraging this behavior? <laughs> yeah, that's a funny way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would not, like, I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine not having that mm -hmm. at, a, at our schools. Mm. Yeah. Um, Mac, preteen slow dancing to 90s Usher jams, arms straight out above the waist. Hmm. That's, that's how to do it. You know, the chaperones, keep your hands uh, above the waist, kids. <laughs> um, White Lightning, Super Mario Bros. Did anyone practice on having an R&B voice? I think we all did. We all wanted to sound, uh, mm. yeah. When you, when you have a deeper voice. No, I mean, we just, I don't know, like, I just felt like, you because there were so many groups you know, boys to men. Like, there was just so many groups going on. And, like, you know, you'd, you'd sing. There was a lot of singing. And there was a lot of singing in, in my uh, in my schools. I was, always, I, was, I was part of the choir. Like, I would always join choir. I liked, I liked, I enjoyed it. I can't sing very well. Um, all right. Back, back to denim. Yeah. Back to denim. School dances are fun. Sia uh, 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 wins. L-M-A-O. Uh, school dances were fun and awkward at the same time. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to shake it off. You got to shake. You got to. You got to get through it. It's a good time. Um, uh, can you show the Japan Heritage Kasuri would like more in-depth look at the weft? Yeah, no problem. Give me a second. Let's find a pair. Yeah. Chris Knoll, so innocent back then. Now fourth graders touch naked pics to each other. Yeah, that's not do good. That, no, that's not good. Um, I don't know how to. A M I B. I can't find it. The uh, cholos and gangsters wouldn't dance, just boogied. Yeah. Yeah, I guess dance is some more like a straight. Or like mainstream kind of things, and there's always like a guys that are 
don't belong in that world. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I always just felt like it was the cool kids who had the, had the most fun, and uh, mm -hmm. us nerds just kind of... Awkward. <laughs> yeah, awkwardly danced with, you know, a bunch of, you know, dudes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this song, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking your Coke. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. But it, you know what? Also, they had the school dances during school hours, which I thought was great because for, like, a dollar or whatever it costs to go to the dance, you got to get out of class. There was class going on? Yeah. And, the, and <laughs> there was, not only was there class going on, I think it would, they would have it like, they might have started like during last period and then school would let out at three and it might have gone till four o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't a situation, at least in my junior high, it wasn't a situation where the school dance was like way after school hours, but high school it was. Uh -huh. But in junior high, it was like during school hours. I'm like, I can get out of class for like a buck. Yeah, yeah. I need a buck. And and who is going to the class that's going on? The kids the who didn't pay for the dance. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Really dumb. Um, <laughs> Ray Tattoo Boy, sorry, LOL, sorry I brought up school dances. No, 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 it's okay. No, I think we're all fine. enjoying a walk yeah. down memory lane here. Uh, anyways, speaking of uh, uh, the speaking of the uh, uh, Japan Heritage Kasuri, because it got mentioned, awkward transition. Here it is, right here. So dark indigo on the outside. You can see that I've got a picture. Not a picture. This is a. Uh, hopefully you can't see. It might be hard to see. But this is what the weft yarn looks like. It is a kasuri dye gradient yarn. So there's a lot of colors going on here. It's a single strand of yarn with many different colors throughout. And you can see on the inside here. what that weft color looks like. So you can see on the outside of the fabric, if you look closely, you can see some of the colors coming through. It, just like the milk denim, I guess, depending on how bright it is outside or the, you know, the, the, the shade of light, you will see it more. But clearly you can see that weft, uh, you, you, you can see it on the weft. Uh, so this is gonna be a great cuff flipper. And as you fade the jeans, you know, it'll fade to white, but you'll have those colored undertones throughout. Great cuff flipping jeans, the Japan Heritage Kasuri. So you've got the mix of slub texture, you've got the colored weft, multicolored weft. And uh, one thing I have to say about this is that right now, the way that our production is working is that we have to basically book fabrics a year in advance. And so the typical process for us is we would, at least in the past, we would have a uh, fabric sampled. So the, the mills would produce uh, you know, one or two rolls for us, enough for us to make uh, a couple of samples. And then we would show those to our retail partners. Uh, you know, we would uh, travel to trade shows, go around the world and, uh, and, and show those off. And uh, our retail partners would place their orders, we would collect those orders, and then we would uh, go into production. You know, we'd, we'd say to our mills, okay, this is how much fabric we need, uh, produce, they would produce it, and then ship it, we'd make it. And that whole process, you know, it would take about six months or so. Mm. Um, right now, in order for us to get fabric in time for, um, right now, uh, spring, summer 23, mm. right now, we're gonna book spring, summer 23 production. We haven't even made the samples yet. We haven't even showed it to anybody but we have to book the production and have it made now so that we can have it in time for spring, summer 23 delivery. Mm -hmm. That's how backed up everything is in the world. So with the Japan Heritage Kasuri, we're operating on a very similar schedule to that. So we had to book this fabric well in advance before showing it off to anybody. And so we basically have to guess how much we're gonna need, what the demand for that's gonna look like. and we've. We've sold out of this in pre-orders with our retail partners. So the this is I, this is going to be a it's going to be a fast seller. I think I, I don't think that these are going to last long, and we can't get any more. So we've we've sold out, but we've actually oversold. So we're at kind of the point where we've taken in a, a little bit more orders than um, we're able to produce on these. And if that's an indication of what like the demand is going to be for our you know customers, the end customers, 
it don't sleep on these. You're going to want to get these early um, because after, you know, a couple of weeks, the key sizes might be a little bit harder to find. Um, so uh, there's a couple of styles for spring, no, fall uh, 22 that are like that. And the Japan Kazuri is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, a couple questions about this denim. Will the... Um uh, will they be rinse washed? No, they will come raw. They're gonna come raw. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any hairy denim options available or in the works? Any very hairy denims? Um, I'm gonna say the M I the new M I J will probably be hairy enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know what's gonna be hairy? The Katechu denim. Mm. Um, now we showed that off. It's a uh, yeah. Reese is gonna. We, we've got the fabric there, oh. yeah. Um, so this fabric is quite nice. It's not particularly hairy right off the bat, but I've been wearing the sample jacket and it got really hairy over time. And uh, so man, maybe it's not gonna show up so much on this, but. It, uh, it, it develops like this fuzz. It, it is samphirized, so it is singed, but you know, the more you wear it, the more the cotton fibers will kind of pull up and you'll see it more. Um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna show up on, the, uh, on this camera so well, but the Katechu denim, dark indigo on the outside, and then you have this brown natural color. Uh, this is a Katechu dye, it's like a, it's like a, a bark, um, a tree bark dye. Uh, that makes this great warm color on the inside. It's very similar to like the turmeric or like the huntsman denim. Mm -hmm. um, I find this very like kind of masculine, like yeah, because folly colors. It's got this like green gray. brown tone, which yeah. is really nice. The turmeric was very yellow and warm. Mm -hmm. This is still warm, but it's kind of like a, a dark brown army green yeah, kind of color. Green kind of things. Yeah, so this is very coming cold. in for the fall. Um, now, when we produced the sample, the mill forgot to put the, co the proper colored weft in. Uh, so we never got the right sample for this gene, but they, they, they did get the fabric uh, sorted out. So we got, we got, a, we got that in, uh, here to show up. Um, are the Kasuri genes going to be unsamphorized? Uh, Smoke asked that question. No, they will be samphorized. There's not going to be too many unsamphorized options. We are. Just the MIJ, but it yeah, will be... It'll be rinse washed. Yeah. So it'll be a Tempe treated uh, to get rid of the shrink. Um, we will re-release the natural indigo loom state. So we have that as a basic dark indigo, I think it's 15 ounces. Um, Unsamphorized denim, not pre-rinsed, not pre-washed, none of that stuff. It's going to be pure raw loom state um, denim. That's going to be restocked probably around the summertime. Uh, so if you're looking for a uh, absolute classic, you know, unsamphorized draw, that'll be back. And they're only like 155 bucks. So very, very good deal on, uh, on those. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Pedro Cortez, the XS jacket, Elephant XS jacket will be also available on the 25th, right? Correct. Uh, the, uh, the, the production arrived in our warehouse today. So uh, we will have them, we're, we're shipping them fast. We're gonna ship them fast to retailers on Monday, but they'll be available at Tate and Yoko and Naked Famous out of NYC. Um, yeah, so has everybody decided uh, what to wear for the Indigo Invitational? Yeah. Is that right. something that... Uh, Indigo Invitational is coming up uh, and, and we, everybody's gotta get registered. I haven't registered mine yet, but I'm gonna be wearing yeah, I have to decide. I have to check if I have what I wanted to The wear. raw cotton slub. These are going to be... Um, Maybe I'm early, gonna have April. Er, early April. So I will, uh, I'll have the April delivery schedule, uh, release schedule up soon. But the raw cotton slub, the 16 ounce natural cotton denim, big slub with seed. It's a little hard. Maybe you can't, you can't see it, but mm. you can see the little spots throughout the fabric. This is going to be my go-to for the Indigo Invitational. 
I've uh, I've already won. I've got the most faded jeans already. <laughs> no indigo. <laughs> no indigo. Um, so last year I went with the black. This year I'm going with the Ecru denim. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to wear this because no, it's, I think it's a great color for the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, despite its heavy weight, I think it'll I think I'll be fine. Um, but I also am looking forward to transitioning this into the fall mm-hmm. um, because of the kind of you know it's it's a natural colored cotton. And so it's got this warm kind of color to it, and I think it's gonna pair up really nicely with a lot of fall outfits. Hundred percent, because it yeah. already looks great with this like super folly like suede uh, brown patch. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see that. Going. So, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Whoops. But should I uh, pair it up with the jacket? You can't wear that every day. I could. <laughs> I'll look like I'm in a boy band. Um, but we do have the matching jacket as well. Yeah. Yeah. This one would be a good jacket. Like, not saying that you should match it with the matching pants, yeah. but... If, if folks are afraid of wearing these, this is an easy way to get into this fabric. I never noticed I would use a different colored suede. I wonder if that's a mistake, mistake or not. <laughs> it might have been. Um, white jeans with colored weft. That could be a thing. That like could a, be a thing. That, that yeah. could be a thing. Um, let's, you know, we're still getting people warmed up to this idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think a, a, like a, a crew denim with a colored weft. That's you know. That's that's a couple steps yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. we we yeah. did the natural seed already a couple years, and yeah. now we're introducing heavier weights to this group. So we'll see. Oh, I like this jacket. <sighs> Oh, you're gonna have a spaghetti stains. Oh yeah, for sure. Mom's spaghetti all over this. Um, Puff Daddy would be proud of the all white outfit. I, th- I hope so. I hope Puff. You know, one time I was at a trade show uh, in Berlin, and uh, it was a show called Bread and Butter. It was a humongous, humongous trade show. And uh, at our booth, um, there was a, a gentleman who came. I, I don't know who he was, but a, a gentleman came. Uh, to our booth, and he was like, "Oh, I really like your brand. You know, I've been following you guys for a long time. You know, I like what you guys do. Uh, you know, here's my card." And uh, he was from Sean John, and uh, it was like a executive, like some somebody kind of up there. You know, like, I don't know the I don't remember the name, but I remember like the, t- the title. Hmm. And uh, I'm like Sean John. I'm like, oh yeah, small brand. You know, uh, you guys are uh, you know up- upstart little company, huh? And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, 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 we're just a little company. I'm like, cool, cool, yeah, good, good, I heard of you guys, you know. But uh, I, anyway, he knew I was joking, but uh, I, I thought that was kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Every now and then you run into, like, these, especially at those trade shows, that's kind of what I miss about them. It's like sometimes you meet, like, some interesting yeah. characters. Yeah, yeah like randomly. Pe- yeah, very randomly. You know, like, like the... Uh, 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 like the director of GQ and things like that. Like they're always at the show. Like mm-hmm. all these people that like you see in these magazines and things like that. Like you run into them, you talk to them, you like you meet a lot of these folks. And uh, yeah, for the last two years, it's uh, it's been without that. So it, you know now it, like you know you email some of your colleagues and things like, hey, what's going on? Like everyone's like, I don't know. Nobody knows what the heck's mm-hmm. going on. It's a, it's a, are, are trade shows coming back? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a big question. Big question. Um, uh, okay, man, forty fives. I felt hoodie sleeves go up and felt angered. I felt hoodie sleeves go up and felt angered. I don't know what. The- oh, like when you put on the 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 jacket. Uh huh. Like you know how like it just oh. gets stuck and that's frustrating. Yeah, so yeah. I think he it is a little experiencing oh, that. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know the key is to hold this and mm-hmm. then put your arm through. Yeah. That's the that's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, Jordan Green. Speaking of white fabric, will we have to wait until summer for the linen denim? Um, I don't have a release date on that yet, but you won't have to, you won't have to wait till the summer. Yeah, um, it will probably be April in or May. May, yeah. yeah. Um, Kenny Ingram, have we gotten a True Guy update? Anything to report? Nothing major to report. I'm still waiting on the sample. So as soon as I have the data, as soon as I have the sample, you guys will be the first to know. That's for sure. Um, okay. Uh, 
BD, very, very important comment. One hour in and only 32 likes. Likes? Come on, people. Well, technically, it's 36 likes, and that means it's time to like this video, everybody. Take a, take a moment and uh, hit. hit, smash, crush. I don't know. What, 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 what really encourages people to tap? Tap that like, that, that like button. Pop the... Pop, tap it gently, just ever so slightly, and uh, yeah, help get our likes mm -hmm. all the way up. There we go. Now the likes are going nice. up. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> uh, you know, I forget to do that. You know, I do find that in the videos where I say it earlier in the video, which I probably should remember, we get more likes. Mm. Yeah, but... Uh, well, BD's there to BD's remind BD's there us. to remind us. Thank you very much, Mr. BD. Appreciate the reminder here. Um, but yeah, and, and we'll segue into the next ask. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe to our channel. You'll get a little free animation right here in the corner. You will, I promise you. So uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll uh, transition on to more denim. Uh, <laughs> Ray Tattooed Boy, man, that jacket looks great on you. Well, thank you very much. It, it is a great way, like I was saying, it's a great way to, to experience this denim because it goes well with uh, dark indigo jeans. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, are, especially with denim jackets, sometimes people are afraid to be the, you know, to represent the Canadian tuxedo. Mm -hmm. You know, dark denim on top, dark denim on the bottom. They feel a little weird about it. Get a contrast jacket. Mm -hmm. This way you can wear it with any color jeans, um, especially this, this kind of cream color. And as this gets beat up, I mean, it's going to look really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I, I might, uh, I might, I might, I might, I might have a new denim jacket. Um, uh, Trevor, have you ever considered selling home items uh, for the brand such as candles? Um, not candles. Um, I mean, we, you know, like with knives or yeah. like things like... Small um, leather goods or yeah, the banner. Like we, skateboards. Skateboards, yeah, yeah, is a good example. It's like we, if we meet up with the, the right team, up with the right people... You know, why not? Yeah. But, I mean, it's not going to be, like, our consistent, yeah. like, you know. I, I like making the little stuff just because I know that people, like, they want it, right? Mm -hmm. Like they, It's fun. It's fun, fun little right? little projects, yeah. Yeah, it's fun little projects. How can we do something there? But it's not, like, our, our uh, main, uh, yeah, our main goal isn't it's to, not like, sell gonna be tchotchkes. part of yeah. our permanent collection, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, smoke, Denim Dan, that's right. I should, I should have that embroidered. Denim Dan. <laughs> um, uh, okay, the, I, the, hold on. There's a lot of questions coming through. Um, uh, Riley O'Brien, how tight should the waist be on a new pair? Barely tight. I don't, I don't like selling jeans to anybody um, that where the waist is tight in the waist. Mm -hmm. I like people to leave the store comfortable in the waist, or a little bit of room in the waist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I find that some people have this idea, and look, sometimes it works out, but oftentimes it doesn't work out. Where they buy these their jeans too tight, they get them really snug, and they think, okay, well now they're gonna stretch out and they're gonna be perfect. Well, they are gonna stretch out, and they might stretch out enough that like you can wear them, but now you don't have any room, mm -hmm. right? You don't have room to grow. You don't have room to like, you know, the mobility becomes an issue, you know, like you, 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 you've got to the point where you're like, you've got just enough room, you gotta have a little bit more breathing room than that. Like you've, if you've had a big meal, like you're gonna have a little bit of a problem. You wanna have a little bit of growing, like we're guys, you know, and there's girls too. Like mm -hmm. we need to grow, Yeah, right? But, but also like just by like, even at the same, on the, you know, the same minute yeah. you stand up, yeah. you have more room, yeah. you sit down, you're, you're tight. Like, yeah. it's just like, just because you're like, when you're trying on jeans, you're standing. Yeah. But you have to think about life. All the like, things you that have you to do. Sometimes yeah. sit or squat or like all the things. So yeah. it's it's not a good idea yeah. to get an uncomfortable pair to start with because then you're just going to be uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. Like your jeans kind of cutting into you when you sit down, when they're that it's very uncomfortable. Uh, if you've ever been on a long flight with jeans like that, you're, you're just dying. You know, you're unbuttoning your button and it's just, you know, and then you forget to rebutton your button, then you get into, <laughs> don't do it. Be comfortable. Comfort is the key. You'll wear your jeans longer mm -hmm. if they're comfortable. Uh, if they're uncomfortable, the first chance you get to change into a new pair, you will, and then you'll never get your fades, you know? 
like, and the, especially for us, like we, you know, we're, we're the kinds of people who we consume a lot of jeans. We like jeans. And if you've got an uncomfortable pair on and you've worn them for five months and they've kind of stretched out fine, mm. the second you put on something more comfortable, that's your go-to jean. That's the jean you're going to be wearing more and more often. And then you you forgot about that other pair that you had. So, you know, hey, it's good. It's great for business. You know, the more uh, times you, you uh, change your jeans, but I want you to wear your jeans. Uh, so I, I would prefer that you get the size that fits you properly than uh, you getting a pair of jeans that you don't like wearing as much because they're not comfortable on you, mm -hmm. right? You might like the jean, but if they're not comfortable, you're not going to wear them. Mm -hmm. Kenny Ingram, wear your jeans. That's right. Wear your jeans. Wear your jeans. Um, Kenny Ingram, how much has the rise on the weird guy changed over the years? I have weird guys from 2017 and weird guys from 2021, and I can't tell the difference. From 2017 to 2021, it's probably about the same. It's uh, it's really like the early days of weird guy up until like 2017, where the rise has probably gone up an inch. Um, the early weird guys were certainly a lot lower, um, mostly because that was kind of the... Uh, you know, as, as men's tastes kind of evolve, like it was lower because those kind of rises were more popular at that time. Uh, but the, the rise on the weird guy certainly has, has, has gone up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Chris uh, Dungy, Chris Dungy asks, I'm an owner of a leather goods company. What's the best way to get in touch? You're getting in touch right now um, with you uh, about, about the possibility of doing business. I'm about to receive my second pair of jeans from you guys. Well, uh, you're getting in touch now and just send us an email we, we, or send me a, a message on Instagram. Uh, we're, we're pretty responsive. So uh, mm -hmm. there you go. Um, uh, one, Mark Andrew, one. Need the King of Lords in size 38 super guys. Are you planning to release these. Uh, King of Lords in size 38 super guy. Mm, at this point, it might be hard to find. Everything yeah. that we have is out. Um, but yeah. just just go on Tatenyoko and sign up to be notified on that size. Um, you know, sometimes we do get like some random returns yeah, or true. we find a random pair in the warehouse. So just to be safe. Yeah, you, you will be notified if that ever restocks. Yeah, if you're ever looking for a re like a, a product that is, you know, the size is gone on Tatian Yoko and a Naked Famous Dead Man NYC, go to that product, go to the size that you're looking for, and then a little button will appear that says notify me when available. Mm -hmm. And you click that, you put in your email, and the second inventory is like registered in our system, it sends out an email letting you know that it's available. So uh, look, it's uh, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get that notification because it, it may not come in stock, but at least you have a chance to know that it will. So uh, I would I would uh, definitely encourage that. Um, okay, um, okay. Uh, Smoke, thank you for adding to the rise of the weird guy. You are welcome. Um, uh, Russell, you Wilden. Will you ever do a red core black jeans or even a restock of the Freddies? Core color with uh, black, not doable um, so far. We've not been able to make that happen. It's certainly something we would have done at this point if it was doable. Uh, it's just, I guess, the way the black dye and the, co and the colored yarns work, they just, they just don't work. Um, so... I don't have the exact science for that, but it, it just hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if we can and if we can do it, we will do it. You definitely know that about us. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second question about the Freddies being restocked. No restock. Uh, that was a one and done. Um, but if you're looking for something, there's a, a few sizes on Naked Famous Denim NYC. Or try that uh, back in stock notification because mm -hmm. you know sometimes people exchange, return, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so that that size you're looking for may come back into stock. Um, okay. Uh, BD, the rise on my Elephant X weird guy are a total dream. Feels so high and cozy. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying them. That's it. Cozy comfort. That's the way you're gonna uh, enjoy your jeans the most. Um, Black denim with color core would be a game changer. Simple text. I think so. I think so. It's certainly something we've wanted to do for a long yeah. time. Um, but sometimes there are just 
I don't know if they're impossibilities, but they might be. I mean, at this time, they're at, they, at this they time cannot do it, yeah. and that's why yeah. we cannot do it. But yeah, Milad A. Will there ever be a restock on the Okayama Spirit Five? Um, maybe one day when we do a reissue, you know, like right now, like these days we're going through like the elephant series and, and like looking back at that, like the Okayama spirit one is coming back in MIJ form. So the MIJ, uh, 10, 10, 10 MIJ 10, we're going back to one of our most iconic fabrics, the Okayama spirit one. So we're at the point in our history where we have a history. You know, archive. An archive, yeah. so we can go back. So, Okami Spirit 5, maybe one day. I'm not going to say that's going to happen anytime soon, but um, there's there's definitely a possibility. That that was a very popular fabric. Um, uh, uh, one, Mark Andrew 1. Thanks for the response. How much shrink can I expect from the size 40 King of Lords supers? Not very much shrink because that has already been... Uh, rinse washed so we've gotten rid of the shrink for you and it, it is an unsamphorized denim that has gone through a rinse wash mind you there's probably a little bit of shrink left in that fabric you know uh, un with unsamphorized fabrics they, they you know they continue to shrink and stretch and you know all kinds of weird ways but that's why we like unsamphorized fabrics uh, they're unpredictable um but you know but i don't think you're gonna, gonna get be, an, it's not yeah. gonna be an inch yeah it's not gonna be an inch um uh, David T, was the Okayama Spirit 1 16 ounce? I think it was 16 ounce. Uh, what did you say? Okayama Spirit 1. I don't know. I, 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 I I'm in there. <laughs> pretty <laughs> sure it's 16 ounces. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's funny because the other day I was talking to Brandon and uh, we're just talking about all these old fabrics that we that we were doing and I'm like, oh, because we, you know, we're working on Spring Summer 23. And we're like, oh, remember this fabric? Oh, what if we did something like this? What if we did something like this? He's like, I don't remember that fabric. And I'm like, and it's just at this point also, there's so many fabrics in our archive that it's like it's hard to remember. Yeah, all it's of them. Fifteen years yeah. of of yeah fabrics, and like we make what average like twenty something fabrics. A, more than twenty 30, a year. Yeah. yeah, like in recent days, like there's been like thirty yeah. a year. Yeah, so yeah, it's a lot of fabrics. Right. It is a lot of fabrics, so uh, sometimes if I don't remember all the details, please understand that there's a lot of uh, info that I gotta remember, uh, and there's just not enough room in here. Uh, every time I learn a new fact, an old fact uh, leaves my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, gotta make some room in the storage. Yeah, okay. I know. I, there's no more. I'm, this is it. My, my hard oh. drive is full. It's oh, just, there's a lot of useless information. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to, uh, I'm gonna unlearn how to tie my shoes soon. It's uh, we're almost there. All the stuff I learned as a kid, just gonna start uh, self-deleting. <laughs> um, uh, pretty how writes, is garment dyeing with black possible? Luke dyeing, Luke I think like dyeing a completed jean. I imagine dyeing an already indigo dyed denim could result with a superficial layer of black dye. Garment dyeing anything is possible. Um, yes. Garment dyeing a dark indigo jean black. See, here's the thing with garment dyeing, is that the dye, because you're soaking the entire garment in the dye, the dye will penetrate everything. Yeah, it wouldn't be like rope dyeing, yeah. that's, if that's what you mean. Yeah, so you're not going to have like a black that fades away and then you get to the indigo that will then have the, the white core. If you dip your dark indigo jeans into a bath of like RIT, like RIT dye is a popular like home uh, like mm -hmm. uh, dyeing uh, uh, substance, R-I-T dye, you can find it anywhere. Every Amazon everywhere has it. You got like black RIT dye, take your jeans and dump it into like a bath. Of, don't, maybe don't put it in your bathtub because I think the, the RIT yeah, dye will stay. stay in your bathtub. Yeah. Do not do that. Get a bucket or something. Um, that dye and that bath, all that dye is going to do is going to penetrate every like bit of that fiber. So all the way to the core of that fiber. So it's it's not gonna fade anymore. Like you might yeah. get like um, like sun fading or just like general color, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, yeah. fading. Like a t-shirt, yeah. black t-shirts like fading away and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it wouldn't be a layer of black dye, as you said. It yeah. would just be the black dye taking over. Yeah. Um, Pedro Cortez, you guys should have 
a huge whiteboard that has everything written on it or some kind of computer database that you can refer to. We do, in Brandon's office, we have a giant whiteboard. It's not a whiteboard, but a giant like uh, cork board with... The thing yeah, is... It's not updated. Yeah, it's not it. updated. He, like, he started yeah. it one season and yeah. it's still that season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there's a couple of seasons on the yeah, board yeah, yeah. that are like, just... Like moved along, yeah, yeah, yeah. not replaced yeah, or yeah. anything. So it's like here's, here's that season and then this season. Yeah. And, then, and so it's like... And then we just stopped and like there's a giant cutting table mm -hmm. with like a 10,000 swatches of fabric mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, like our database, I mean, we have a, you know, a database. Of, we of, have a system that we started using in like yeah. 20... Yeah. Something like that. So we, we have that. But it doesn't, it's it's just a system. Yeah. Like it doesn't include all the data. Yeah. Like. There, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of early Naked Famous data that we lost. Brandon kept right. a lot yeah. of information on one, on one computer and that hard drive literally turned to dust. Mm -hmm. Like we sent it to like a, a data, um, like kind of recovery place and they're like, this is dust. Like yeah. you, there's, there's no like plate left. It is, it is toast. And the server yeah. that we kept the, like stuff yeah. on, like it's not consistent. Yeah, 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 like yeah, line yeah. sheets are not yeah, on there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we're. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, I mean, if somebody we, was was to archive this entire brand's f history, they would have a hard time. Mm, I have a lot of info. Like, I have every line sheet from mm -hmm. like 2009 till now. Okay. I have them all. So. There is a record of most of the things, but there's some things that don't make it to the line sheet. Like sometimes we'll do like special collaborations right. or things mm -hmm. like that, that that don't make it on there. Um, and uh, I mean, I guess in our building we have probably a de like physical paper prints of like really old. Anyways, we yeah. don't. It yeah, would be like, a, it would be a huge task. Yeah, and I, I I think you're right. The the ones that are hardest are like because sometimes we do like really cool things with outside of the the yeah. you know normal like selling period, like uh, steps. Like we would do it we partner with a retailer or you yeah. know, brand or whatever, and those kind of end up being like a cool thing that people talk about. Yeah, yes. Uh, sample tax rights. Having a public archive of all your past lineups would help thrifting older stuff like the royal cast denim yeah you know it just, it's just it's a manpower thing mm -hmm. like it, it it seems like a like a it's i don't even know if it seems easy but it is not like it, i it sounds like uh, something i would totally enjoy yeah. doing yeah like i would just love going into like details and like yeah. make sure everything is there all of that things but yeah. i don't no. Yeah. I, I One tried. day, you know, we need to have because Risa and I and like our, our 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 team, like we do so much, and it's like all the little side stuff. Just there's oftentimes we just don't get a chance to really sink our teeth into it. You mm -hmm. know, maybe one day when we when we've got more staff and we're a bigger company, then we can say, okay, we can spend our full time doing this project instead of having to focus on you know parts that are like very essential to the business right like everything right now is like it has to be part of the business mm -hmm. um so yeah going through uh 15 years of archives and like to be fair i would say that mostly every gene that we've ever made is in the building like in in the in the at, at hq perhaps I yeah don't know. i would say at least over 80 percent mm -hmm. right there, there are a couple little styles here and there that we might have made, you know, mm -hmm. 20 units or 30 or 50 pieces that are gone. Or maybe, like, there was a style that we made for, uh, you know, custom for Nordstrom that, I don't know. Uh, they might have just, you know, we made it and then we shipped it and then that was it. Mm -hmm. um, so those might have been lost to time. But, uh, yeah, mostly everything we got. It'll, one day we'll have a big archive. We'll have a book. But, uh We'll get there. I think the sooner we start on that project, the easier it, it would be. Yeah, but you know, I'm not a. That's fair, but we would. I think we'd have to hire somebody who's a professional at like bookmaking, archiving. Right. But know. to be fair, like in the past few years, mm -hmm. we've been pretty like you know the, all the data is there. Like, yeah, it's all the data is so, there. Yeah. it's not so hard. I yeah. think going back to like you Older know when stuff. it started. Yeah. yeah. Um. It requires a lot of sleuthing prowess, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. 
Because you know what? What will happen is you'll go, you'll, like, if you're really keen, you're going to go through all the invoices and you'll see, okay, this style. And you'll say, oh, wait, why don't I have a record of this style? It's not on a line sheet. It's not here. It's not mm-hmm. there. What style is this? And then you have to figure out just from a name, what did that denim look like? And then you have to go through, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it would be difficult. It would be a fun process, but a very difficult process. Because you'd have to have, here's all the names of fabrics that I don't have a, a photo of. And then you'd have to go through our, like, warehouse, like, piles of jeans that were just random. And then you'd have to make a list of, okay, here's all the jeans that I have. And you start making those connections. Yeah. Yeah. I got a good yeah. question from Kenny Ingram. What's the closest core fabric to the h and Salvage? Mm, maybe the natural indigo salvage that's probably the closest mm. yeah the natural indigo is a little bit warmer tone but i would say that's the closest because the ichiban was a natural indigo dye um it's a, a little bit warmer shade of dark indigo while the natural indigo salvage is even warmer than that i would say that's mm. the closest one lighter I yeah would say, natural indigo is. yeah yeah um Okay, El Sanchez, 1984. I recently found a new old stock jacket by scrolling through all the shops that carry Naked and Famous that you list on your website. Yeah, you know, I, I forget whose website I was on the other day. Oh, you know what it is? Um, Franklin Road. Mm-mm-mm. You want to see an archive of old Naked and Famous stuff? Franklin Road. The thing is, a lot of the stuff, he doesn't have any stock mm-hmm. on the website, but they have all the old photos. Mm-hmm. They have all the old products. They're all there. And maybe there's some random stock here and there. I'm not sure. But Franklin Road Apparel, look them up. Uh, they're on our store locator. They have uh, I was I was on the web because I was looking for some old stuff for somebody. And uh, I, I found their website. And I'm just like, wow. I'm like, do they have all this in stock? And then the, they didn't. But uh, they had all the old photos. I thought it was neat. And it's fun to look at them, for sure. Like, I, I, look, I get the appeal of the, of the archive. Um, so maybe one day. Maybe one day. Um... El Sanchez, 1984. That's where I found it. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah good. There there you go. I like the way we think here. Um, Man45, a coffee table book showing pictures of various unique fabrics Naked and Famous has done over the years would be nice. That would be nice. I agree. You have the raw. You have the faded. You have the details. Mm-hmm. You have all these weird fabrics. There's, there's I would a, buy that. You know, one thing that we, we're not good at also is archiving. Like, you know, we go on all these trade shows. We go to all these cities and things like that. And we don't take a lot of photos when we're there. Mm-hmm. We, I feel like in the early days, Naked Famous, we used to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we'll, we'll go on a Japan trip and there might be like five photos of the whole trip. You know, re- especially like uh, of the more recent ones. Yeah, um, whenever we go to like the fabric mills, we tend to take pictures. Yeah. But not anything else, I guess. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, so, we're so busy. Like we're so on the move um, that it's hard to do that. Uh... Oh, Pedro Cortez, how many jeans do you think you could name from the start of this brand? I bet a lot. I bet I could name a lot, too. Um, somebody was asking earlier, and I think they asked twice, and I didn't mean to ignore it. I just forgot it, and then now I remember it. But I forget who was asking, but somebody was asking about birds. And they said that a lot of your jeans are named after birds these days. Um, and is there a reason for that? Firebird, blue yeah, bird. Yeah. Uh, yes. There's got to be more than that. Um Firebird, Bluebird. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, sometimes I just get in a... It's just a theme in my head, so it just keeps running with it. And, like, I might have done it once, and I'm like, oh, that was cool. That was a good name. Let's uh, let's see if we can... Yeah. Mm. Try that again. Like, sometimes, like... For me, the name just kind of... Yeah, Birds in Sky, yeah. Summer Sky, Blue Sky, sky yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why sky I mean, sky's is because it's blue, yeah. right? <laughs> There's, you know... It's it's gonna be uh, the sky or it's gonna be the ocean like the the the, the blue yeah. river or the yeah. red you know oh we don't yeah. really we don't do a ocean, lot of we huh? no we water. did the Seto Uchi salvage right. once yeah, yeah. which is uh you know a, a body of water yeah. but um it's the inner yeah. ocean yeah, yeah inner ocean in Japan but uh yeah maybe I'll, we'll we'll look to the seas next to, yeah. uh, for Pacific for naming ocean. things yeah but like bluebird I think that's you know obvious right because there yeah, are. Yeah. So bird, yeah. yeah. So sometimes I'm just trying to match the feeling. You know, if it's a lighter weight jean, I need something that kind of feels lightweight. And so uh, the the naming conventions are, I try to make the name feel like what the denim is. 
Mm. And I think yeah, I, yeah, yeah. 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 That, and then it's like whenever you try to like explain the shade of blue that yeah. is, like you know, like it, sky is a good example because sky can be blue, but it's different kinds of like yeah. sky has yeah. different names, yeah. like you know. Like golden, golden hour, hour, right? That yeah. was actually a reference to the sky because right. the golden hour is like right before sunset, yeah. and it's 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 a beautiful time to take photos. And it's such a warm, like it's a warm feeling of the sun. Right? Yeah, it's not so bright. And like sky blue is more of like a lighter blue. Yeah, and crimson sky, like somebody yeah. mentioned, it's it's like, like a you know a red, red sunset. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's a good. Yeah. Yeah. The. the uh, uh, simple text, big bird selvage. Yeah, for a heavyweight denim, big bird selvage. Uh, but uh, De- oh, yeah. Devin Hunt put a bird on it. Shout outs to Portland. Uh, yeah, you know we have we ha- we used to have a great retailer out in Portland. We still do at, at Macus. Macus they, they 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 carry Naked and Famous. But uh, Lizard Lounge in Macus, and um, we had a great uh, we had a great. They, they closed unfortunately during the uh, the pandemic, but uh, yeah. we did a gene for them once. And we put a bird on it, and I, I, I because they were, I, I, Portlandia, you know, mm-hmm. that was a very yeah, funny yeah. show. Um, uh, what am I thinking of right now? Yeah, birds, uh, sky. So sometimes I get into this mindset mm-hmm. where I'm very fixated on something, and then I'll, I'll move on. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of. What, what, uh, like right now I'm designing, I'm not, like I'm putting together the mood boards for the pocket flashers for fall, winter 23. So that's another thing. Sometimes I get like, like with the, uh, strawberry milk denim, like we, we, we partner with some really, really great artists, but, uh, it's like, you know, I want something that looks like a cereal box, you know, like a, like an old cereal box or things like that. So I, I just kind of put a mood board together and I tell the artist, like, here's kind of what I like. You know, here's what I'm seeing for these jeans, and then they, you know, use their uh, incredible talents to put it together. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's how how that stuff kind of comes together. Um, we we have a feeling for what the fabric looks and feels like. Mm-hmm. Come up with a name based on that, and then mm-hmm. the flasher sh- should kind of match that in some way as well. Um, Kenny Ingram, I never had a canvas pant before. How does the duck? canvas compared to a twill cotton chino um a twill cotton chino and a canvas i mean you're, you're talking about like some pretty smooth kind of feeling fabrics already um like our raw cotton canvas is a little bit slubbier so you've got a little bit more of a gritty texture compared to like a uh a tight twilled chino material mm-hmm. um but yeah, yeah I, mean, I think canvas in general makes it look a little bit more casual just the way that f- fabric is like Chino makes it a little bit more, um, what do you call it? Like it's more dressy. I find. yeah, dressy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So workwearish vibe from canvas right. rather than chino. Yeah, and chinos tend to have a little bit of shine to them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it just it, it, it's usually just made with like smaller yarns, thinner yarns. So like it just it's it's more of like a, a sleek. Yeah, yeah, compact yeah. Uh, fabric. Um, David T, do you know what the rise will be on the true true guy? Should I just be patient? Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let let's wait for the sample to come in, and then I can give you more details on that. Um, Jordan Green, I really want you guys to come visit Portland again. So do I. Um, you know, I really want to get back to America. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, well, uh, I want to get back to, like, you know, just random cities. Like, we don't, like, in the past, even before COVID, like, in the past, you know, couple of years, we would kind of, like, go to the same places over and over again, like, for trade shows. Yeah. Which is, you know, fine. That's, that's what And then we right do, before the pandemic, we, we went around California a little bit. We went up to a couple of places and we were thinking, like, oh, we should do this more often because we get to visit the customers and, you know, customers, customers. Yeah, and we like did an event was, at uh, Maple Street Denim. Right. And you it know. was, the, we, we visited Slash Denim. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of, like, a lot of fun to meet people because we do have our own customers. But yeah. then, like, you know, it's, it's different when you have like a you know store yeah their own customers right 
uh, Los Angeles, Russell, you wild and yeah, we, we want to come back, mm-hmm. right? We want to come back. So come to Winnipeg for the launch of John's Jeans. I, you know, I, I've never been to Winnipeg. Brent has been a few times. I, I you know, I've, I've not been able to visit Denali in Winnipeg. I'd, lo- I'd love to do that. Um, Philadelphia, I want to go there. I want to go everywhere. I want to go everywhere. I mean, hopefully the world opens up a little bit more right now. I think North America, especially America, is a lot more open up than than a lot of places. Um, but yeah, Japan is like, we can leave, but then coming back is a pain in the butt. It's, uh, yeah, hopefully things will change, but uh, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Um, Mac, will you bring the AeroFit to more brick and mortar stores? I'd like to try on a pair before buying... I don't live near Tate and Yoko or Naked and Famous Denim, NYC, or Slash Denim. Uh, somebody yeah. also was asking about uh, Chris uh, Dun- Dungy. Uh, sorry, I missed it, but what is the True Guy uh, cut going to be like? The True Guy is going to be a straight leg fit. I would say in terms of the Naked and Famous world, unbranded world, it's kind of like the uh, straight fit from unbranded. So it'll be similar. The most similar thing we have right now is is that. Um, will it be available at stores? It's up to the stores. You know, we make the jeans, they bring them in. So we, we off, we will offer it to everybody that we can, all of our retail partners. And, uh, if they decide that they need a straight like fit for their store, they will bring it in. You know, we don't have as much influence on other people's stores as we do our own, obviously at our own stores, we can, we put in everything. Um, so if there's something that you want at a retailer, you gotta let them know, mm-hmm. and that, and that's the only way that they 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 move and change, right? Like there's one thing, like you know, they might see something popular on Instagram. They might, you know, one thing that buyers used to react to a lot was, you know, when you go to the trade shows, you see what everybody's wearing, because what's what's kind of being worn at the trade show, you know, that everybody's an industry person, and you know that that's like okay, well that's if I see something there, I know that that's the next thing, mm-hmm. right? So. That influenced a lot of people in their buying decisions, but Instagram more and more has been has been influencing that. But of course, the most influential thing is being a customer in the store. Mm-hmm. When you're in the store and you're talking to the salesperson, you're talking to the owner. You know, a lot of these places owner operator, right? Small businesses. So, you know, you get in a fit, you like it. Oh, do you guys have anything like this? Oh, I'm looking for a straight leg fit, or I'm looking for you know a flared fit, or whatever it is that you like that you're looking for. Be, be vocal about it, right? It's, it's easy to go online and just buy it, right, if they don't have it in the store. But if you want your store to be your store and you want them to be alive, you want them to flourish, you know, you have to you have to support them. So um, it is very helpful for you to let them know what you're looking for and uh, they'll react to that. They, they really will. You know, it, you know, it's not often that one person is going to sway their, their, their buying habits for their shop, but... The more they hear about it, the more likely that they're going to react to it. But if you don't say anything, they're not going to know. So um, yeah, and going back to Arafat, uh, just just to to add to that, that that's, that's all true. But um, for Arafat, like we kind of released the spring fabric first. So like spring fabrics are seasonal fabrics, and that's you know like um, that that's what's available now um, now or in the next couple months but like it will be available in core fabrics and once it's in the core fabrics you know it, it tends to core is you know more popular so it tends to kind of distribute a little bit wider so it will come um hopefully Arafat would spread into the the world but uh, we'll see yeah. No. Yeah. Adam and right straight leg is pretty popular right now at our store mm-hmm. well there you have it there you have it um uh, Chris Dungy, ah, got it. By the way, congrats on the new store in Rochester, my most local store. That's right. So uh, follow us on uh, our Instagram. You know, I, I, I'm going to start, you know, as, as the Naked and Famous Denim family grows, I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll post more about that. You know, our, our uh, on the website, you know, we, we update our, like, our retailer, uh, our list of retailers every so often. It's not always the most updated. Sometimes there's retailers that are, that are you know, past and there's retailers that are with us. Yeah, you know, it's so just, it's yeah, so manual. Yeah. Like it is every single thing is, is yeah. manual on that thing. Yeah. So I, it, it takes yeah. so long. It takes a while, but uh, it, it does eventually get updated. Um, you know, if you if you go on the, uh, you know, every time we release a product, we also have a list there. So you know, we we try to let everybody know. And I can kind of like I I, I rely on crowd 
sourcing help too. Yeah. Like if if you notice any store that sells naked and famous and that's not on the list, or you know, or like if you're a retailer that's not on the list and you carry naked and famous, yeah. please reach out yeah. and uh, we'll we'll get those updated. Yeah. yeah. Um, a brainstorm strawberry. Just pulled the trigger on the strawberry milk jacket. Lucky for me, I'm an extra small grin. Yeah, the extra small was initially. <laughs> yeah, well, initially it wasn't going to be made. Yeah. Um, it, so you're very lucky with that one. Um, you know, we don't make a lot of extra small jackets. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I think I explained it in the in the previous stream. The the size run of the production got shifted down one. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had. Fewer larger sizes and more smaller sizes. So uh, if you're a smaller fit, you definitely can get into that strawberry milk jacket. Um, uh, okay. Gaming King 33 do you have any retailers in Mexico? Yes, we have uh, Casa Denim. C-A-S-A, Casa Denim. Um, you, you'll find them on the retailer uh, uh, list on the website. In Mexico City. Yeah, Mexico mm-hmm. City. Yeah, Andreas. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, really, uh, really awesome guy, yeah. and and his wife. We, uh, you know, we've met him uh, a few times. He, he came up to Montreal mm-hmm. um, to meet us, and then you know we've met him in uh, New York and things like that. But uh, yeah, very, very, nice very, very great people. Um, uh, can I go to the New York City store and pay for the Elephant X jeans and jacket, and then go pick them up on the twenty fifth? No. Um, yeah, we don't we don't do pre orders or things like that. Um, Maybe one day we can figure that kind of thing out, but uh, yeah. I yeah, don't know. I mean, it's a whole process that we gotta. Yeah, pre orders, like it's, I don't know. I mean, it's fun. We can even, like, technically do it now, but it's just kind of like, what's the point of having a pre order and then, like, a. a yeah, a, like if you like can go into the store and buy date. it, I would rather, yeah. Yeah, like we have release date now, so, you know, we can kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, know. If yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, because, like, release date is literally the, like, you know, w- with pre-orders, it's going to have a date where you can start pre-ordering, too. Right, that's so it. It's yeah, so not, what's, what's really yeah. the point? Yeah. Um, Bernard Supply adores pre-order. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Mm. Oh, Gerhard Supply adores. Mm. Pre- Gerhard Supply adores pre-order. Do they? Do they? Do they adore it? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Hey, look. Allows some, pre-order. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe allows. Know. Anyways, it's, it's up to the retailer. Up to the retailer. Like, we don't yeah. maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay. Does pre-order? Uh-huh. Gerhard Supply does pre-order. <laughs> I guess it's the auto correct on the yeah, phone. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, playing its uh, hand there. Um, does pre-order? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, we got it. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, up, it's up to the retailer, right? right. They're, they're free to do so. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um, Mac, thanks for answering my arrow question. Looks like looks like I'll be bu- uh, bugging Dutil and Rainbow here locally. Mm-hmm. Um, Dutil definitely will get some arrow, I think, shortly. Yeah, yeah if they haven't already. Yeah, uh, but yeah, l- let them know, and that way, you know, they know that uh, people are excited mm-hmm. for it. Um, and uh, or go figure out a weekend trip to Montreal, Tatinyoko. Yeah, a weekend trip to Montreal is always advised. Um, we will have the Montreal, Quebec, mm. vul- vulgar Mm-mm. selvage available by the summertime. It might be a great chance to pick up a uh, uh, a souvenir from mm-hmm. Montreal. So uh, I'll make sure that we have those available in, in the ladies' fits as well. So we'll mm-hmm. have them in, in the men's and the ladies, just like we have for the Empire State Selvage in New York. Nice. Um, Todd Hackett. I hated those days when you can buy clothing on sale and then pick it up like a month later. I hated those days when you could buy clothing on a, on sale and then pick it up. I don't I I don't know what that uh, like a pre-order. I a guess. pre-order for a sale item. I don't know. Um, uh, I Mac. mean, on sale could be just regular price on sale. I'm not sure. Tat uh, Todd. You're going to have to clarify for us. Uh, uh, Mac writes, the Tabernacle Selvage. You better believe it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be full of French Canadian swear words. Uh, uh, the Moor, Layaway, Pedro Cortez. I think he's talking about Layaway. Mm. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know how that worked exactly. I don't think that, you know, in Canada, that was so much of a thing. 
Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how that system worked. Um, uh, okay. Do you have a sample of the sky high? Uh, I do, but I don't have it here. It's, it's, it's packed up somewhere. Uh, we'll, we'll show it off next time. And it's not the correct. We well, we have, have the... well, we have the fabric. No. Yeah. We have, uh, we have to have, like, it's not a. Prop. Yeah, it's not a gene. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have, anyways, mm -hmm. next week, tune in. We'll show off some mm -hmm. of the sky high. Um, uh, okay, new red core update. Will the gradient core jacket still be released or has it been axed? It hasn't been axed because it's never been in, like, we, we have never... We yeah, didn't it, decide it, on making it yet. Well, yeah, it's it, it's the yeah. I I have a small list of items that I'm adding to fall. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, hold on, let me find that list here, and I can let you know because I know you're gonna ask me probably twenty more times after this. Um, so let me find out. So I've got the. Uh, Denim jacket, red gradient core, that's coming. I have the raw cotton canvas in olive. So for these are these are fall winter 22 fabrics that you might have seen on previous streams, but I'm just letting you know what's coming that was not originally mm -hmm. uh, announced. So we've got the raw cotton canvas in the denim jacket, red gradient core, a denim jacket. Scratch and sniff was not made. We were gonna do it, but we cannot do it. We don't have any more fabric left to do that. And I'm bringing in a couple of chore coats, um, blanket line denim, uh, indigo, indigo, blanket line denim, indigo by white. I'm going to do a left hand twill chore coat. Uh, and uh, that's it. So three new chore coats, two new denim jackets. And uh, I know your next question is going to be what are the measurements for these items? Because you're very... Uh, you're, you're very on top of the questions. Uh, you're going to have to wait till they come out because I, I, I'm not going to have those until then. But uh, there you have it. Um, Pierre Moreau, cool stuff planned for the Easter sale. Yeah, the Easter sale is going to be pretty big. Um, you know, we just had the uh, buy two, get one free deal on Tati and Yoko for our sales section. So we had mm. something going on there. Um, we will have... A different promotion going on for uh, Easter probably something more in line with what we've done in, in previous sales like what we do for Boxing Day what we do for Black Friday so our, our big sales of the year are Easter um, we do a, a Labor Day no sorry we do a Canada Day 4th of July sale so can America Day sale celebrating the friendship of Canada and America mm -hmm. um, so Easter sale can America Day we got Labor Day then we have Canadian Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Boxing, Boxing Day. Day. So I think that's six. I might have uh, counted wrong, but I think that's six. Mm -hmm. um, so those are our big sales throughout the year. You know, during, uh, you know, uh, September, October, November, December, you know, we kind of have one thing lined up every month. Um, yeah, it's very like a later year heavy. Yeah, it gets heavier later on in the year, that's for sure. There's just so many holidays, right? We, we kind of revolve these things around yeah. the holidays. Um, so, but, you know, we don't do... Uh, yeah, we got our sales section. We've got our 24-hour specials, which you get if you're an email subscriber. So every week you get a new deal in your inbox. Um, and then sometimes we have, like, special promotions. Like, we had that uh, buy two, get one deal. That's, that's, that's been passed already. Uh, a lot of people took advantage of that. We might do something... Anyway, I, 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 I kind of like that. I, anyway, we might have, we'll have more deals kind of in that realm again. Mm -hmm. You know, buy this, get that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so watch out for those. Uh, we've got some big restocks on Unbranded happening next month. Hopefully, you know, as long as the shipments arrive on time which they probably won't, but uh, anyways. Yeah, well, oh, don't the hold your breath, yeah. but by May, we should, by some time May, yeah, we the, should have something. The unbranded website's like sold out. It It's bare, like yeah. we really don't have anything. It, it's so, crazy. Yeah, yeah, if you get, like I, I saw somebody uh, who just got UB621, Relax Taper 21 yeah. on, it's like, I, that must have been one of the yeah. few, few pairs, pairs left. left. Yeah. yeah. They're, uh, yeah, you know, supply chain shortages, delays, shortages, like we're feeling it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
You know, well, everything well, I... is taking longer to get. Yeah. You have to pre-prepare well, well, well in advance. And even when you do, things, like, just the, the stuff happens in between. The shipment can't arrive. Oh, you missed the boat. Oh, that boat is full. You get it on the next boat. You get it on the boat. You can't get it on the train. You can't get it out of the port. It is... Yeah. Yeah. Very frustrating. Um, yeah. Uh, any updates on the soft... Uh, Ned plaid shirt, soft nep plaid shirts. Uh, what kind of updates are you looking for, Brand Mac? What kind of updates are you looking for? It's coming. It, hmm? It's coming, right? What's coming? We haven't released that yet. I don't think we have that shirt yet. No, just the loose weave. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, how hot? Besides the green, gray, and Coca-Cola work shirts, any more work shirts planned for fall, winter 22? Wait and see, my friend. Wait and see. Um, what jackets are you wearing? What jacket are you wearing, Bazette? This is the raw cotton slub, 16-ounce natural seed big slub denim with nep coming next month. Mm -hmm. So we have this in the denim jacket. We're going to have also have it in the jean form. So... Yeah. That's coming very soon. It really does look great with the with the gray hoodie. Yeah. It yeah. the contrast denim jacket, it's uh it's the way to go. Um uh peek at the Grand Drell elephant. I can't get enough. Yeah, we can do that. I also wanted to show what's coming next week, which is the elephant XS. So we've got uh, a pair right here. This is gonna be available next Friday. Uh for mm -hmm. those people waiting, this is the first heavyweight stretch option mm -hmm. uh, that we've first, ever done. First stretch elephant. Yeah, it's the first stretch yeah. elephant. So, heavyweight, nine, uh, I forgot the weight. Probably 19, I think it was 19. We're gonna double check. I think it's the 19, yeah. yeah. This was based on the Elephant One construction. So 19 ounces. Wait, this is also the wrong one. This is the Grand Drell Elephant. I'm losing my mind here. <laughs> There's too much stuff around. Uh, so somebody was asking for a Grand Drill update. Okay, I'll give you the Grand Drill update. Yeah. I'm like, wait a second, this is not the Elephant XS. So check that out. That is the Grand Drill black and white twisted yarn weft. So on the inside, you can see it kind of looks like a static from a TV. Uh, it's got a great look, great cuff flipper. But what's really neat is that it makes the denim look both indigo by black and indigo by white. So you can see that like it's n you don't see like the white grain throughout the fabric. You see white and you see dark spots. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, so you've got a mix of both indigo by black denim and indigo by white denim all in one jean. I think it's going to make a very, very fun fading jean. Plus you've got the big slub aspect of it. This is based on the Elephant 5 big slub construction so you've got a slubby denim that's going to fade in like a really you know very unique in, in like way that you've not seen in a denim before so uh that's coming for fall winter 22 fall winter 22 and this is the elephant xs there we go you can see i mean you know same color stitching and all so uh mm -hmm. but indigo by uh this is indigo by gray mm -hmm. um so you it's kind of i will say it's interesting because this is a twisted yarn, black and white. So, I mean, if you mix black and white, you get gray. Mm -hmm. But you can clearly see, like, the white parts of the weft and the way that it looks, like, it makes the denim look. Because right? yeah. you can see the that white twill showing through. Um, <laughs> messes with your eyes, eyes a little yeah. bit. But this one's a little bit more, um, more uh, what do you call Consistent. it? Consistent. Yeah. 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 So... so. This one is the 19 ounce uh, Elephant XS. Uh, first, Elephant, elephant with Stretch. With Stretch uh, based off of Elephant X, which we released last fall. Yeah, so if you, if you miss the Elephant X, the feeling is very, very similar. Like it's not a particularly stretchy denim. It mm -hmm. will stretch a little bit with time. Mm -hmm. the, the stretch is really gonna activate. The more you wear it, the more you wash it. Especially wash, yeah. yeah. So that is it. You've got the gray weft interior. You've got that chromed out selvage ID. So you can see that there. We can focus it there nicely. And yeah, uh, yeah let's do a little comparison shot here. Yeah. Elephant X was the tenth elephant, so that's why we used that like silver selvage ID just yeah. as a diamond 
kind of yeah anniversary yeah there you have it okay both elephant x and uh, elephant xs and Elephant Eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you have it. I, I'm very look, looking forward to how people react to the the heavyweight stretch. stretch. Yeah, it's, yeah. People have been asking for it here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also just not something you see a lot of. I don't right. think anybody does it. Um, so we did. Uh, what was it? Bane. That was sixteen ounce. Sixteen ounce. Eighteen ounce. I don't know. Anyways, it was on the heavier yeah. side with the stretch. Right. But um, yeah, this one doesn't even feel stretchy at all to yeah. be honest it, it, you'll feel it later on mm-hmm. for sure and yeah I know a lot of people did miss out on the Elephant X so this is a chance for you to get into it uh, again and uh, and maybe for those people who are like anti-stretch maybe you'll you know sometimes it takes uh, you, have, you have to try it for you mm-hmm. to understand what's going on there I know that there are uh, you know people out there who are very you know I don't really like stretch denim it's not authentic for me or whatever uh, but then you feel it, and then you're like, oh, I see the appeal Stretch now. Stretch is a useful thing in jeans sometimes. Yeah. Uh, comfort is, I mean, look, comfort is key. You know, if, you, if you're comfortable in your jeans, you wear your jeans. Um, so if there's, if there's any way to make raw denim more comfortable, and more, it makes it more wearable. And the more you wear it, the more you enjoy your jeans, the more you fade mm-hmm. your jeans. Um, uh, uh, BD, elephants are my fave line, I think. Uh, sad I only started with the 9 and now the X. Uh, it's not sad. It's, it's great that you got to start. You, you know, there's, there's people who've never experienced heavyweight denim. But also with the elephant, I mean, X was, um, X was a reboot of... If, of the one. Yeah. 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 X and then... Yeah, and then we yeah. keep rebooting yeah. in different ways. Yeah. Like, so it, it's, it, you know, you don't have to start at one. Yeah. You can. Uh, yeah, start. even if you did start at one, would you have had time to wear every one of them? You know what I mean? Yeah, every yeah. year. Yeah, mm-hmm. you come on every year. Um, uh, what does a piece denim with the word piece in every language on the selvage? You know, I wanted to do that. Um, you know, when we every did the, language? well, I don't know about every <laughs> language, but I wanted to do like the last, the vulgar three, I think I mentioned in the video, um, the vulgar three was supposed to be the peace and love and all that stuff, mm-hmm. uh, gene. Mm-hmm. And so we were planning on doing like little peace signs and happy faces and, you know, and then, uh, I, I think I said it best in the video. Uh, I said, uh, you know, peace sells, but, uh, who's buying uh, anyways, some people will get that reference, but uh, yeah, I, I still wanted to do it, and I still want to do the 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 piece and you know denim, the happy denim, the positive denim. Um, uh, especially now, I think it's uh, I, I, uh, you know it's definitely more uh, relevant than uh, maybe ever before. But um, it wouldn't be a vulgar. Yeah, denim. it won't. It, I want to make it the opposite of the yeah. vulgar, right? Um, uh, but yeah, when, when, like, the, the I, 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 people like the swear words. I mean, they just, they, they love it. So, uh, that, that's just the way to go. Man 45, mega death. You got it. Um, what's the weight of the Grand Drell and will there also be an S for that model? The Grand Drell, I think is 21, 21 or 22. We'll double check. Yeah. And we are working on the S model right now. So the idea is that the 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 mo- like the hundred percent cotton will come out in the fall, and then the S model will come out in the spring. Um, oh, sorry, twenty ounce. Twenty ounce for the eleven ounce for the uh, oh, sorry the for the elephant eleven twenty ounces. So yeah, excuse uh, like we were saying earlier, there's just so many things you just can't remember offhand. You, you got to check the notes. Um, okay. Um, uh, Julian Dubois writes, I do 30 on my Goku weird guy for the strawberry. Do you think I take a 31? Thank you, strawberry. I have not elastin. The strawberry does not have elastin. Uh, and my recommendation is measure your Goku jeans because the Goku jeans that you have right now They've stretched since you've purchased them. You've worn them, you know, they've stretched out a little bit. They might have shrunk a little bit. So whatever it is, they're not the same as a brand new pair of Goku jeans. 
Like if you go on the website right now, you go to the Goku, you look at the size chart, the measurements that you have on your jeans because you've worn them are completely different than what we have listed on the website. So as with any jeans, I always say, take the jeans that you have that you're wearing that fit you well. Hopefully they fit you well. Some, you know, you can do it with jeans that don't fit you well, but you have to guess a little bit more. But take the jeans that you own that fit you well, measure them. Then take those measurements and compare it to the, to the size chart that we have listed on the product. And uh, that way you're comparing, basically you're comparing apples to apples, right? You know what fits you well and you know what measurements you need so you can compare it to the fit that you have listed on the website. And at the same time, like if you want something that's a little bit bigger in the thigh or a little bit narrower in the leg opening, you can now guesstimate that based on the jeans that you have. You know, if you're the jeans that you have have a, like a seven and a half inch leg opening, you're thinking, I want something a little bit narrower. Well, now you know that you should look for something that's a little bit smaller than seven and a half, yeah. right? But it, but it is a good point that, that you should see the, the the jeans that you're measuring ha, have a stretch or not because that does make a, a, a difference say if you have a 30 inch waist in the jeans that you you feel comfortable fitting in but it has stretch and you're trying to buy something 100 percent cotton maybe you want to make sure that it's it's the smallest it will be like it would you if you're in between sizes you should go over rather yeah. than yeah. lower right yeah um KMX, will the true guy have a unique coin pocket to differ differentiate from the other fits like weird, super, and easy guy? Uh, it'll probably have the same pocket as easy guy. Probably. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what? I, I, uh, I left that in, uh, in Carol's hands. Mm -hmm. Carol's our pattern maker. Mm -hmm. It'll probably have the easy guy pocket. We'll find out. We'll find out. Find out soon. I'll find out probably a few minutes before you guys find out. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right. You know what? We're coming around to that time. Snack really? time. Oh. Yeah. I forgot about the time change. Yeah. The time change happened. Yeah. The time change yeah. happened in North America. I thought I was like, oh, yeah. man, it's been a long hour. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, <laughs> we, we start earlier here. Yeah. So, you know, Japan doesn't do daylight savings here. And so we're either 13 hours ahead of North America, at least Eastern, well, yeah, North America, um, or 14 hours ahead. And right now we're in the 13 hours ahead mode. And we last week was the last day of daylight savings for you guys. So we were 14 hours ahead. Anyways, time flies a little bit differently now. And because we are, uh, we operate very much on like Eastern time zone just so that we can like, you know, operate in the same time as uh, uh, the office. Um, yeah, it's uh, it messes our schedule around a little bit. Um, uh, yep, Kobang, true guy update. A lot of true guy requests today. Uh, you'll have a true guy update uh, as soon as I get the sample. I don't have it. I don't have it now, um, but we will. Uh, we will soon, hopefully, and we'll, we'll give you an update then. Um, I have a. Do you want to do the good? No, the, the mm, no. we'll just do the, the drink you got because I think that one's really, really neat. Um, uh, NV, US is trying to get rid of day, daylight savings now. I don't think they're trying to get rid of anything. I think that every year uh, daylight savings comes and then there's some news article that gets put out about how we should change the system and then everyone runs with that story and then nothing happens and then next year you'll get it again and then the year after they'll run the same story. I do think though that daylight saving change should happen on the same day for everybody. Whoever participates in this project or you know system, yeah. like they they should change it all at the same time. The more Arizona does not do daylight savings times. Well there you go. Yeah, within yeah. America you should at least stick to that yeah. too. It's... Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I just, uh, have no faith in, uh, these people ever changing the system. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's good arguments on both sides. So, you know, who am oh, I? Oh, I'm to, sure. Look, yeah. I, I don't think that we should be changing the time, right? I think, uh, anyways, whatever. I don't know. I have no, I don't know. No, uh, you know, but, what to, but, but make it easy for people. Yeah. Let's all let's all just get on a one time, guys. 
I think North Korea operates on like a half an hour earlier than Korea. Like just to, we're ahead of you guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I think I, I, I definitely heard that somewhere. Um, but yeah, I uh, every year I hear the same story. I've been hearing that that story my whole life. I'm, uh, I'm at really? the point. Yeah, I'm at the point where I'm like, eh, it's never gonna happen. Um, yeah. Uh, Decibels, they actually passed the bill this time, though. Partly, right, partly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only great for farming, right? Yeah. So. I mean, farming is important. Yes. But, like, you know, UK, one hour on 27th of March. Why can't everybody yeah. do it at the same time? Right, yeah. Pedro Cortez, 30 minutes ahead, yeah. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> seems like something they'd do. Um, okay. okay, so next time, uh, we found this weird drink um, in the supermarket the other day, it is a, a Hokkaido Furano hop, uh, hop soda water. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Furano is famous for a lot of ugly, ugly, agriculture, ugly cultural things. Yes. Um, and uh, hop is one of their their yeah. things, I guess. Uh, they they do have a good like a uh, beer things, yeah. but. Uh, hop water. Yeah. Hop. So I, it's I, like, I, I hear you added more hops. <laughs> You've been to wanting me. to say that <laughs> this whole time. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. Like, I like I like beer. I like hoppy beers. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if I would like that in water. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Japan is, I mean, they'll try anything, I guess, which is it's very neat because you will find, like, all kinds of flavors in everything. And hops water. Mm -hmm. I've only ever heard of hops for beer. I don't even know what else you use hops for. Yeah. Hop I, sacks? Huh? Hop sacks. What's hop sacks? I don't know. It's like, don't they make a sack out of hop, hop sacks? Hop fibers? I, don't I never, I don't know about that. Um, Do you think? It is Somebody tell non sugar. Me. Yeah. And I think they're just promoting non-alcoholic way of using hops to yeah. I don't know, enjoy. A, a new way. Like yeah, you. I don't drink. So okay, let's try it. They sell that now in the U.S. Hop water. Oh, this is delicious. Somebody wrote. It's, somebody wrote. It's not good. <laughs> really, it's it's good this one, but it, it's not necessarily hop that I'm. It kind of smells lemony. Yeah, it has some kind of a citrusy um, taste. Okay, yeah. It tastes good. It's very refreshing. It's this is a soda water with a slight like ten percent flavor, right? It's a little mm -hmm. kiss of flavor. Yeah, it's kind of like um, um, what do you call those drinks? Yeah, like a soda, like a flavored soda water, but... Yeah, it's not bad. It's not something I... Hmm. I... Okay, so... It has like a, hop... yeah, like a sour kind of taste to it a little bit. But so hops are supposed to add like a little bit of bitterness, right? And it does even say that the, this is like a slightly bitter... Mm, I can feel the bitterness now that you mention taste. it. Maybe once you mention it, you feel it, but... It's kind of sitting on my tongue, a little bit of that bitterness taste. Like, it kind of is like a, uh, like a lemon rind, right? Mm -hmm. Like a citrus rind. It kind of has that kind of feel, taste mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. It tastes very, like, I, I like it. it. It's not a bad taste. And it doesn't taste strongly, but it's very pleasant. I think that, I think that this is like a, I think they use the word hops and they use hops just to yeah intrigue people. I, I think don't think so. they have as much hops in it. They definitely but. intrigued us. Yeah. Um, so that is it. It's the uh, Poca Sapporo Furano Green Shower. There's a lot of words on this. Um, <laughs> it's the Green Shower uh, Tochi Craft Soda Water. Yeah. Lots of words. Lots of words. Um, are you drinking it cold? Yeah, we're drinking it cold, fresh out of the fridge. Uh, if it's like a near, if it, if it's like if a near beer was a seltzer. Mm, I do not like. I I don't taste 
It doesn't I, taste like how beer smells to me. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have a strong taste of hop. I don't think. Yeah. Not that I've ever tasted hop by itself. Somebody, somebody was asking about your nails, and then uh, yeah, decibels. Yes, yeah, the cow print. Cow print. Yeah, yeah. For the for the strawberry milk. Uh, yeah. Uh, White lightning hops. Uh, they add it to bread sometimes. Not sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. I can see that. But yeah, this this soda, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I like it. It's not bad. Mac Hokkaido hops, Hokkaido milk denim in the future with a warm white weft. Warm white weft doesn't look like anything. I'll tell you that we did a beer it, dye once, and it kind of had like a a like a yellowish, very slight yellow tint. Like if you didn't, you could miss it. Yeah, like even when we like use okay, this is the weft we use, and look by itself, it looks beige. Yeah. But it, when it's in denim, it's like oh, maybe it's slightly yeah. brownish. Yeah. Like it's hard to tell when yeah. it's weft. It's got to show. Yeah. It's got to show. But uh, yeah, hops denim. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe I mean. one day. Uh, yeah, this is a we. It, it's it, somebody mentioned Lacroix. Yeah, it's like a hops Lacroix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see Lacroix selling this flavor. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, it's it's really good, yeah. but I, I, again, it's not like oh, this tastes like hot. You yeah. Know? Nobody yeah, nobody would, would get that. that. They would think it's lemony yeah. or citrusy based. Yeah, Lacroix. It's it's look. You know, it's kind of funny because it's Lacroix, but it's in I mean in French. Lacroix. Yeah, Lacroix, Le, and uh, that's not the proper pronunciation. I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was like Lacroix. Like. Le yeah, croix. and Le and croix. people are butchering. Yeah, it. I thought it was an American butchering. Like when Americans say foyer, they call it foyer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if how many Americans uh, are having their minds blown right now, but uh, yeah, you always say foyer, and I'm like, it's a foyer. Yeah. Yeah. You know the entrance entryway yeah, yeah. to your home. Yeah. yeah. There's I, there's a bunch of words like yeah, that that yeah, like yeah. it's already become that so yeah. like nobody can yeah. like like the the French word has become Americanized so much that mm -hmm. it uh, yeah it uh, it's now the American version yeah yeah I, don't I also find that American people call like Hermes Hermes yeah yeah, yeah. the the, 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 like, uh, the, the like yeah they they're uh, their pronunciation I mean they don't learn French so they don't. Uh, I mean, they don't, like, in school, they don't teach French. But also, like... Not that they don't. I'm, you know, I'm sure some people do. But generally speaking, they don't They don't uh, yeah. get French. And Ikea. Yeah. It's Ikea. Yeah. But they call it yeah. Ikea. And now, like, nobody understands if I yeah. say Ikea. Yeah. Like, to be fair, I call it Ikea. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We've, yeah. we've, we've, like, we've, 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 we, we own that. that. We've yeah. took it over. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Pedro Cortez, an American butchering sounds like slasher from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> American <laughs> Porsche. Butchering. Porsche. Yeah. Click. Click. Uh, never knew that about IKEA. IKEA. Yeah. In Japan, it's all IKEA. Everyone says it right. Yeah, because yeah. It, we took it from Swedish people. Like, we yeah. tend to take yeah, like, yeah, words yeah. from exactly where that came from. So, like. Yeah, in Japan, they're very good generally with the pronunciations of. Uh, like French and foreign, like they might not say it. Like oh, we don't bypass yeah. it, English. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. we just get it directly. Y right. But, but Costco. Yeah. In Japan, because there's a T in yeah. it, we call it Costco. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Yeah, they do call it Costco. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 well, that's just the Jap Japanification of English words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. Lol, isn't it like the pronunciation of Ryu, like Ryu, like in the West we used to call it, like in Street Fighter Ryu and Ken, but it's Ryu. Yeah, it's yeah. a hard, a hard yeah. sound for English speakers yeah. to pronounce. It's Ryu. Yeah, but it's yeah. Not, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the weekend is a good example of instead of fend de semaine. Uh, yes, um, but in France they use le weekend, mm -hmm. and in Quebec we use fend de semaine. So there are there are differences between like Canadian French and uh, French from France. Can Canadian French is, I'm going to say it, it's more pure. I really, No, you know what? I'm not going to say it because there's no such thing as a pure language. Language evolves, right? But it's just when... They're more persistent in the yeah, Frenchness of yes, the language. They're, they're more persistent in the, the way it was mm -hmm. instead of adopting... 
other Ang languages. Other languages, yeah. yeah. French, Canadian French is very like, we will make our own word. If that word doesn't exist, we won't adopt the other word. We'll just make up our own word. Like, like in France, th we're going off tangent here a little bit, but in France, they'll call, uh, you know, a cell phone like this, a smartphone, a uh, uh, smartphone, mm -hmm. right? They'll, they'll use the English word. But in Quebec, it's telephone intelligent. So it is literally a smart telephone, but in French. Another good one, this, this, sorry, last one. My favorite French-Canadian word is in chien show. <laughs> yeah. Chien show is a hot dog. Uh, so a, <laughs> literally, like, literally a hot, hot dog. dog. <laughs> They'll call it a chien show. So I, th I, 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 I think that's really funny. Uh, BD, I want to start using the Japanese Costco pronunciation. Yeah. So. I would recommend it. <laughs> what is y'all's 15-year anniversary next year? Spring 23. Mm -hmm. Spring 23. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Costa Nem Nembhard. Hey, you two. I hope all is well. It is. Thank you very much. I just have a question. I have an old, old, old pair of Slum Guy Solid Black Salvage. What would be the new cut? Um, mm, what, the mm, new version? I mean, the new version of Slim Guy is a fit that we're bringing out called the true guy we, we should have it by the summer we should have it by the summer um okay uh all right we're gonna leave it at that yeah okay we're gonna leave it at that folks uh it's been great hanging out with you as usual uh do uh i don't know i'm trying to think of a final message but my final message is be good to one another be nice mm -hmm. call your mothers and uh treat yourself yeah. Do something nice for yourself. Do something nice for others. Thanks so much for joining us here on another Friday edition of our weekly live stream. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that like button before you leave, before we sign off, and uh, that'll help other people find this live stream too. Uh, peace, to everyone. Have a nice mm -hmm. weekend. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to everybody, and we'll see you guys Bye. next time. All right, we're going to end the stream now.